because OBS Studio tells me something different every time and I can't trust it. So where I left off at Leo after, it's been what, two weeks now? I believe I left off at up forward three. Right? All right, thanks for, thanks for the heads up. Um, yeah, up forward four. I don't think I talked about forward four, actually. So I got the frame data here, like always. So it'll be up forward, up forward, up back four. Okay, this is the next move on the list. So to recap from last time, from what I remember, this was two weeks ago, so I'm going by memory. Down forward one, primary mid poke. Down four, quick go to low poke, good one. Uh, this is good too for a low, but it's about to get nerfed, right? I already got nerfed in the arcade version. And, um, yeah, the, the, that was the real basis, right? And a down forward one, two for a counter hit with a free follow up, right? I think that's guaranteed right there. All right. You can watch part one. It's on the YouTube downstairs if you want a more in-depth, but I'm just giving you the super basic shit. Oh yeah, and one, two, jab string gets buffed because he has the uh, follow-ups. One, two, one, four, and one, two, one, one. That's one, two, one, one, and then one, two, one, four. Yeah. And then if the third eight hits, the fourth hit on either of those is guaranteed, right? Let's see. Boom. Yeah, on normal hit, guaranteed. Okay, good. All right. Oh, and uh, when you if you get somebody in the back, one, two, one, boom. No, sorry, not that one. The other one is which one you want to do. That's guaranteed when you hit somebody back turn. So, for example, if you're fighting, if you're Leo and you're fighting against Ling Zhaoyu, and you punish the backwards California roll into the Ru, the double kick, the Ru kick. That is guaranteed, because she is negative 11 in that situation, she being Ling, and uh, she stays back turn when you jab punish her. So, this is a straight up block punish for that move up. That also, but the kick one is more damage. Just a little random note there. That's also nice to have, because it's nice to have a, a quick uh, option, 10 frame option, when you get somebody's back. But always remember that when you get somebody's back when they miss something, Keep an eye out for when they recover crouching, because then that's going to whiff, right? Because it's a high. Alright, let's get back to the action here. So I did this last time. So next on the list, according to RB Norway, is a back four defensive jump hop kick, which uh, doesn't knock down at all. Yeah, it's one of those things where you'll start the round with because it's safe. It can be chased down if they're sharp. But even on hit, I think it's unsafe. No, on hit it says negative eight, so it's not unsafe. But still. It's one of those things where, or you want to end the round, and you're kind of right here, and you think they're going to come in, just pop, <laughs> and there's a high chance that they won't whip punish it, right? That's what you use these kind of uh, weird defensive jump moves for. Otherwise, it's not really useful. Next, we got up for. So she has a neutral jump hop kick that does knock down a normal hit. I doubt she can juggle. I don't know if she has any follow-up, though, right? Like, if you can dash and down four, maybe. Yeah, no. Probably no, nothing guaranteed unless you're near the wall. Or on counter hit, you get a full launch. Neutral jump, counter hit, right? Okay, so good, you got that. You have to lay that. Uh, and then the up forward four, which is a standard hawk kick. Now the range on this hawk kick was pretty shitty, right? Yeah, one back dash, you're already out of range. And this looks like it has a shitty hitbox too, so low profile moves would probably go under this hawk kick, if I were just to guess, right? Just visually, you can kind of tell. Either way it goes, standard hot kick stuff. 15 frame punish. If there's any pushback on the negative 15 move, you probably won't reach with this. But still. Um, 15 frame punish, negative 13 on block. What is it? You mentioned Leo down forward to whether it's being nerfed in the future. Uh, down forward 2 plus 3 is uh, the move. Uh, did he know where I can check the incoming nerfs? Kind of nervous about Brian here. I think Brian wasn't nerfed. Uh, if you look on Aris's actual website, Flying Wonky posted the notes there to translate the notes. Avoidingthepuddle.com. Uh, I don't think Brian was touched. What they did is they, with this one was they made a negative 15. So it's launch punishable now. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I didn't really pay attention to Brian. I don't see why they wouldn't nerf him. 
So I, you're probably okay with Brian. Uh, the things that changed the most in that patch is um, a lot of hitbox changes. So for example, Kazumi's 1-1 one, one and her down forward one have uh, worse range now. Which is like, that's a big part of her game. She might feel it pretty bad, she might not. You can negate it if you have really good movement, so she's still really obnoxious. But you know, the range on those moves really covered her a lot. Like, one slight backdash, and you'll still have to block it, you know? Now, one slight backdash might make it whip, and then you'll eat jabs and shit like that, trying to get in on people. Alright. So anyway, yeah, it's not a special, you know, hot kick. Straightforward, you know how hot kick works. Crushes on the ninth frame, needs eight frames to crush. Uh, and it leads to whatever juggles, right? I don't know, whatever Leo juggles are, that's not what this is about. This is about the move list and how to use the moves. You know how to use the hot kick, right? Low crush, negative 15 punish. Uh, probably doesn't track. Yeah, see, no tracking on it. But, you can hold forward or do a slight dash or a sidestep with them to make it track. You know. See? Which makes it come out slower. That's the universal rule for tracking, to go over that one more time. Holding forward for a moment or sidestepping or doing a little dash, that helps track. Helps realign your character. Makes linear moves hit people that try to sidestep. So always remember that. So the next time you, let's say you're a Lily player, and then you hear people bitch about Lily, so her tracking sucks. If you're good enough, it doesn't matter if your tracking sucks on the character. It doesn't matter as much. You can negate that with movement. Uh, next on the list. We have up or up forward three plus four. Ah, this move. So I went over this in part one. This is a very good Oki move. Because if you knock someone down and they stay down. No way, I don't need this. Um, stand guard, guard on. Oops, guard on. And then uh, ground technique, we don't want her to get up. Not set. Right? So if they stay down in any sort of knockdown situation and you hit them with that, and you get that animation where they bounce off the floor, this is guaranteed. And you tack on 16 damage on top of uh, 20 damage. So 36 damage if people stay down. You know? And to compare that to your typical stomp damage, 19, some stomp through like 20, 25 at most. So that's really good damage. To top it all off, right? Stand up. It's only negative one on block. And because you use it as an Oki tool, you could actually get them to block this in the later frames. Now, the Tekken bot I'm looking, it doesn't have the active frame data, does it? It does, it says there's five active frames, so you can make this plus, depending on when they block it, off of what setup. You could definitely make this plus. Uh, I don't know any of the specific setups to do that on though, right? Like, there is a knockdown and you, you're typically gonna be off of attack, so one of these options, side quick roll, right? That's a tep, attack. So you do some sort of knockdown. Plus one. See? On the top left. You could easily get at least plus one out of that. Yeah, uh, Fry and Beery. Fry, Fry and Beery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they, uh, they did that for all Snake Edge style moves. Because there was a glitch where if you're up close... You would, uh, the hitbox wasn't around their thigh area for those kinds of sweeps. So you would, like, go through them and shit like that. So it's just one of those, like, band-aid fixes they did for those weird situations. So that's really what it is. It's bigger near the body area when you're up close. I don't think it's bigger when the character's further away. And, like, you know, then the next thing would be like, Oh, but what about sidestepping? Well, all those moves are homing moves, so it doesn't fucking matter, right? So it's pretty much like, it's gonna be a buff that you're not gonna feel. It's just something that's gonna stop a, uh... A specific uh, glitch from happening. At least from what I've read. I've never actually seen that happen, honestly. Anyway, next on the list. So, yeah, up forward 3 plus 4. It's not really a move you use in the neutral all that much. I mean, it is negative 1. This is pretty much an Oki tool. You know? And then on counter hit, you gotta juggle. 
which is good because then in certain instances uh, you get people wake up kicking when they shouldn't, you know, wake up wake up mid with a mid kick during so certain Oki situations. You throw this in there, they try to wake up with a mid kick, you counter hit, and then you do your juggle. What's the pick up? Back one maybe? No? How about two? Okay, yeah, two, and so whatever, right? You know, and then you do whatever the hell the jungle is. There's probably better juggles than that, but it, that's just the easy pickup. There's two, back one, four, two, and then you do whatever the hell. If you just want like an easy placeholder until you learn the real juggle, whatever it may be. Ah, thank you. Uh, next on the list. 4-4-2. Ah, this is a key move right here. This is one of those moves that uh, you can key charge after if you hold it. To do your uh, your bootleg ass mix-ups. That knocks down on uh, counter hit. Oh, that's a juggle stunner on counter hit. I forgot about that. Is it pick up? Uh, okay. Anyway. Um, if you hold 1 plus 2 when doing this, you automatically go into a key charge, right? Yeah. And then you can do whatever mix up like um, that or that. Whatever. Point being, and that also, if you hold one plus two, you get a key charge. So, like, it's kind of gimmicky, but, like, the fact that the key charge is built into those moves that knock your opponent away like that, it essentially gives you a free key charge attempt. Right? Just remember that when you're key charged like that, you cannot block. But in case you don't know what the rules of key charge are, you cannot block. Your opponent can, but what ends up happening is it goes away automatically, eventually. What happens during the key charge is the next hit that connects, whether it's you that connects it or your opponent that connects it on you, keep in mind that you cannot block, it will count as a counter hit. So for example, uh, that needs counter hit to combo. When you key charge, it will combo on a regular hit. You don't need the counter hit because it gives your attack the counter hit properties. This is a sort of bootleg ass juggle starter on counter hit. Key charge gives you that. Here too. I don't think there's any special counter hit for that, is there? There is. You got a different knockdown for different follow ups. Which is probably something like that. I don't know. Whatever. You know. Uh, any other crazy load that Leo has for counter hit? I'm not too sure, but you get the idea. Uh, one of the most character, uh, one of the most dangerous characters with the key charge is probably Martial Law. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty gimmicky shit. Either way it goes, you can do it off of those moves that knock back and get a free key charge attempt with charges after doing the fucking Power Ranger poses and shit. You know, like... You can only do it on hit, though. Yeah, see? <laughs> and then you can do it with whatever counter hit tool mid you can mix it up with. Anyway, so this is just a general good uh, tool to control the, mi the mid-range here. It is unsafe, but it is only negative 10, so it's not that unsafe. Okay. And I don't know, like, there's not really much pushback. Because Leo moves forward so much. Yeah, see, it doesn't seem like even if I block it as shallow as possible, I'm still able to get a jab punish here. So. I don't know if there's any sort of spacing to make it, like, safe. Because any more spacing makes it whip. So, it's gonna be unsafe either way. So, if you're fighting against Leo, be sure to punish that. Still, um, that's also a popular follow up to that. See? The full cross down forward three sweep sets it up perfectly. If they do anything other than stay down, right up the ass right there, right? And it's 25 damage, really good damage. Uh, in general, it's a pretty decent, like, anytime. Because the thing about, like, a knockdown like this, I fall, f I, you know, even to this day, I fall for all the fucking time, right? You fall, when you're fighting against Leo and you get knocked down like that, you're so far away, you're like, oh, let me just hold back and get away. And all of a sudden, just BAM! Always in range to just land that fucking punch right up your ass. It's a really good tool. In general, in a new, you know, in this situation, in a neutral, when you're dancing around this mid-range, you can kind of like always kind of have that in the back of your pocket whenever they whiff something. Yeah! Yeah! And you get a free 25 damage. Thank you very much, name I cannot see because Tekken bot is blocking. Ah, shit, Minuteman! 
my amigo. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll sub to you when I'm not broke. <laughs> I'm too broke right now. Uh oh, your sub, your sub destroyed my frame rate. <laughs> I'm at 30 FPS now. Can I fix that? Oh, there it goes. Okay, I just had to minimize for a second. No. Nope. Ooh. What happened to my frame rate? Maybe it's the second bot. Let me close and reopen it. Is that what's doing it? Yeah, second bot. Second bot did not like your sub, but I very much liked it and appreciate it. Thank you, Miniman. Let me uh reopen second bot here. And now you get the Akuma face, sm the Akuma smiling face emote. I might have to try to redo that to make it bigger because it looks weird in Twitch. All right, hold on. Let me fix the second bot. Second bot. Boom, boom. Nope. Let me remap it. Is that good? Okay, good. We're good. We're good. Frame rate no longer going to shit. And the second bot is working. That's why I do that minute. Thanks again, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, for those of you watching that don't know, I've done a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you can't tell because that's why I say his face is too small. Beal actually did that shit. And uh, I use Beal's, and uh, I think he's got to be one of those zoomed in without the hair to really see the smile on his face. It's from Tekken Bowling. When Akuma hits a strike or a spare, he kind of folds his arms and smiles at the screen and shit. It looks really weird. Anyway, uh, if you scroll down, You'll see a link to my YouTube. It has a bunch of my past characters. And also, if you're in the chat, feel free to ask a question even if it's not Leo related. As long as it's Tekken related, I'll help you if I can. All right, anyway. So yeah, 442, really good move. Like usual, the tracking, it probably doesn't, doesn't have any inherent tracking. Okay. Yeah! But, like usual, once again, with forward forward moves, you double tap forward forward, hold the second forward just for a little bit. It will help it track. See? <clears throat> no matter which way they go. Of course, the trade-off is you're delaying the move, so you're opening yourself up to getting hit by mash. Nature of the beast, right? Also, sidestep with them. It'll do it. All right, next on the list. So yeah, four, four, two, good move. Next on the list, uh, four, four, three. Ah, this is another solid Oki tool. Knocks down on normal hit, safe on block, forces crouch on block. Uh, decent range. Any counter properties on this? No. I think there's a free follow-up on normal hit, though. I don't know what it would be. Nope, definitely not that. Maybe down four is guaranteed. So, 28 damage. Let's see if it's guaranteed. Record it on yourself to test, right? Oh, I forgot about that. I'll get to that in a second. Let me not do that, though. That was guaranteed to me. Yeah, down four is definitely guaranteed. Okay. So, one thing I just found out by accident that I had forgotten about with this move. If you hold down, you go into... Um... Bok. B-O-K. B-O-K stance. So that's usually a pop popular follow-up I see. So I'm gonna guess that if they are to block it and you go into box stance, um, you'll be plus. Just a guess, just a hunch here. See? 
Oh! How fast is that shit? That's 13. Okay. I don't know how plus it is. Plus one. Let's see. Four, four, three, down. Plus one, force crouch. Okay. This is one also one of those that has a lot of active frames. So if you use it as an Oki tool and they stand up into blocking it, you can get more plus frames out of it. Uh, so holding down to go into box dance gives you plus one to plus four. If we don't go to box dance, it's negative four to negative one. Force is crouched either way. Which is to say. Right? Okay. Which is to say, if you want to sidestep instantly from this, you can only sidestep up towards the background because it's forcing you to crouch. So if right now I'm on one piece side, if I wanted to sidestep toward the foreground, which is currently Leo's, my Leo's right side, I would have to stand up, crouch cancel, and then go down. So there's no way to instantly sidestep towards the foreground. That is the rule for taking advantage of a forced crouch situation. Always remember that. So if you see some of us like, oh, it's not gonna one on block, it sucks, but it, for it forces crouch, keep that in mind. You force crouch, Another thing that means is uh, they their move set. If they were to do it, uh, you know, since it's a negative one situation, if they were to take advantage of that negative one, woo, negative one, um, in the force crash situation, at best their eleven frame move will exchange with your stand jab. So that would depend on the situation where if you want to take that sort of risk, you know, uh, a lot of characters do not have a while standing ten frame move. There are some, but most don't. At best, from crouching, 10 frames will be crouch stab, and as you can see, crouch stab range is fucking garbage. Garbaggio. It's with City. And even if it were to hit you for some reason, it would do like 5 damage. So yeah, keep that one in mind. That is how you use a force cross situation. So if you force cross with plus frames, even fucking better. Even better. Another thing to take uh, notice of in regards to force cross situations is this is where matchup knowledge also can uh, help you a lot. If you know my character is only gonna uh, my opponent's character is only gonna be able to do instant while standing without this situation how is their while standing tracking? If you know that hey none of their while standing moves track to a specific side every time you make a force cross a move you could go towards that side you know you put them into a force cross situation let's say two player Leo is only able to track to Leo. Uh, this is a, this is a hypothetical. I don't know if this is true. Let's say all of Leo's while standing tools only tracked to Leo's left side right now. Right? There's two player Leo. Let's assume all the while standing moves only track to the left side. So if I put force cross situation like that, right, and I go up to that Leo's right side, what is the Leo going to be able to do to track? Now, one thing you could do to help track uh, while standing moves, similar to how when you're standing, you kind of hold forward and then you do the move. You could do down forward and do the move, right? But then, we talked about this. This is only a negative one, negative four to negative one situation. If you're making them do that and then do a move, their move is going to come out like 10 frames slower, <laughs> you know? Maybe, at best, maybe like five frames slower, right? You could fuck their shit up for doing that kind of thing. That's just one of those things to consider for matchup specifics. Either way it goes, 4-4-3 four, four, seems like a pretty good move. It's definitely one that I've seen Leo players use. And uh, if you hold down, you go into be okay, right? To get plus one. You can get as much as plus four, so if you happen to catch them teching, maybe, let's see if I can do that here. This is really hard to do off of this. Damn, the tech and bot won't be reliable for this. I don't know. You're gonna have to find a setup of some sort that would give this to you. Negative three. I could probably make that plus two if I be okay. Uh, plus one. Plus two. It said it for like one moment, and then it went away, and it went to 13. 
So yeah, there's another example, right? I'm sure there's many more. And I'm sure like Leo Mains will be able to tell you if you look for Leo specific setups. Got plus three there. I got plus three there. I saw it for one moment. So if you have if you manage to get um, If you manage to get plus three, this will exchange with a jab. This is the fastest move out of BOK. BOK one. And you can do that. You can work that in there. So if you get people to respect the plus frames out of something like that, you can start to work this in to keep getting plus frames. That's a normal hit juggle starter, high homing move that low crushes, but it is hot. But it is also plus nine. Yeah, plus nine on block. So, you know, it can, it can help you make BOK pretty scary. Just keep in mind that there is no built-in lows out of BOK. See? There's no built-in lows. At best, you cancel BOK when it's a crowd. And then you go into low. So there's a pause there. There's not a super long pause, but there is a pause. So keep that in mind when you uh, are facing against Leo. Be okay, no built-in lows. So if you sense any sort of hesitation when you see the stance, you know that, oh, a low might be coming now, but not right away. Anyway, yeah, 443, that's that. I don't think it has any tracking once again. But like usual, you could just hold forward. Yeah. <laughs> nice little sequence. That's the kind of sequence that gets people to jab. It's a full shot out of it. Or duck, because it is a high. And then when they duck, that's when you do this instead of that. Stuff like that. Alright. Also, I think this floor breaks. I'm pretty sure that floor breaks. Let's check. In a situation where they stay down, does that even happen in this game? So, first of all, okay, no, no, okay. I think in a tailspin situation, no forever, corkscrew, whatever you want to call it. Four, three plus four and four, four, three are floor break moves. And both of them are actually really good Oki tools back to back, huh? And they both low crush, and they're both mid. And they're both safe or plus on block. <laughs> Good shit. Um, all right, next is forward, forward, forward. Ah, this fucking move. All right, so here we got. There's a full extension to forward, forward, forward. There's basically forward, 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 three, which is a launcher, and forward, 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 three. Oops, forward, forward, four, three, four. So the thing about this is this move has changed throughout the games. Uh, I don't think it tag two. It gave an instant tailspin like that. I don't know. That's the course group. I do know it was a launcher though. And if I'm not mistaken, the low in the end, if they were to block the first two kicks, the low becomes a jungle starter too. Is that still the case here? I don't know. No, not on normal hit at least. No, it needs a counter hit. I don't know what the pickup would be. Yeah, it's definitely some sort of pickup. Yeah, 
Whatever. Um, so the low on normal hit does not give you a juggle. It just gives you negative one. But it is, it is still scary that it's a counter hit juggle starter because it makes you hesitate punishing that, which is negative 12. I always hate this kind of shit when I do this. The trade-off is, though, it's no longer launch punishable on block. It used to be that low. Yeah, see? I can't jab. If I try to punish it, if assuming that, oh, Leo's only going to stop after the first two kicks, I get uh, juggled. And then the low is only negative 12 now, right? Yep. So that used to cause that trip, uh, that trip stun. Now it just keeps going and it's negative 12. Huh, so it makes like 4 4 4 3 punishable with an asterisk, basically. You can't sidestep below either. Really obnoxious shit. So that makes 4 4 4 3 really good move in general. The trade off is though, if you're Leo and you commit to the low, because you have to commit, you cannot delay. You cannot delay the low in the end. You have to commit to it right away. If you commit to it, you fuck up your jungle. Actually, no, it's a tailspin move. Yeah, that's a reset, that's not a juggle. Woo, that's a long post. Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to find the crest of Craig. Oh, yeah, me, so. Uh, so you can multiple instant while running to a drag. Be interrupted by Jebs, <laughs> ducking or standing. Sometimes it happens to me and I can't understand it. I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's slow or precise or buffering. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Signal Zero's asking if multiple instant while running twos. I'm assuming you mean after a block while running two. Can be interrupted on jab. I'll. Check that out for you real quick. I actually don't remember how fast this uh, while running two is supposed to be. FYI, you're asking about standing or crouching jab. Um, most most of the cast is able to instantly crouch jab at 10 frames. So that's that's like a semi-universal thing. I think the only character who cannot is Yoshi Mitsu with sword stance. Maybe in no sword stance he can, but I'm not sure. What else is he? And just for good measure, we're going to go with Gigas for a uh, long-range jab, right? So, there's uh, one easy way to uh, check this out right now. And we're going to use the Tekken bot to do it. So, while running two... Come on, Tekken bot, wake up. Thank you. While running two is 15 frames. And plus five. So they should be exchanging at best. The thing is, I wouldn't bank on you getting instant while running two to the point of no frames wasted. That's crazy. You're not going to get that. <laughs> if anything, if they start jabbing you after a block while running two, you want that. That's exactly what you want. You know what, what would happen? That What that opens up for you? That opens up you just being able to this, and if they jab you, you still get a launch. Right? Uh, I should have switched this around. I should be the Gigas and I should have recorded Dragon off. If they were to block this, I'm at plus five, and I do a 15 frame mid launcher, and they cross jab or stand jab, I'll get jabbed, but they'll get launched. And you're good. If you don't want to risk, you could do a down forward one forward, which is risky in a different kind of way, but that's a 13 frame counter hit move, which will interrupt the jab and it'll combo and counter hit. But the risk is it's mid high and not counter hit confirmable. Or you could just simply one two one. Now a cross jab will beat that, but you could hit you could counter hit confirm one two one. It's actually a pretty difficult hit counter hit confirm, but you can do that, right? Uh, if you want like an in-between risky option, instead of just doing this, you could go for a counter hit 12 frame move for 3 for a guaranteed stomp. 38 plus 19 damage. That's a lot of damage. That's like, that's just under juggle damage. Just under. 
That's great damage. So if you're if you're okay with doing a negative ten on block move, maybe not so much against Gigas because uh, eating a one two is it's a lot worse than a lot of other jab punishes. But still, uh, if they're you know, although in the case of this, it is a high. If you want just no risk at all, mid poke, bam. After a while running two, they would have to sidestep this. Not Gigas though, he cannot sidestep that. Look, if you were to try to sidestep. He ain't sidestepping that. He ain't sidestepping that. Hell, he probably won't be able to sidestep. Oh, take it back. He can't sidestep that. <laughs> he can sidestep the down forward uh, to the 15 frame. So 10 frames is enough for Gigas to sidestep. Yay, Gigas, right? <laughs> but still. Um, most of the cast will probably be able to sidestep this, right? But maybe not the 12 frame mid. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I take that back. Never mind that. <laughs> Where you put myself wrong, right? Maybe not. Okay, maybe towards one direction only, at best. And I'll, I'll bet that most of the cast can sidestep this down forward one in that situation in at least one direction. You also have uh, back three, right? I don't think it does anything on counter here, does it? No, it doesn't. But still, this is a high homing move. And it's 14 frames. So that's a frame trap. That, and so that's a frame trap. You could uh, just while running two and sidestep. You could. You don't have to, like... This is a good piece of advice that JDCR, when he was streaming a lot of tag two, no matter which character you are, right? Dragunov, Leo, doesn't fucking matter. If you're a character... That is real. That excels at getting plus frames. You don't have to always follow that up. The only time I would recommend you always follow something up for plus frames is something like this: plus eight, and he's point blank. That is something you should always follow up. But something like a wild running two, that's plus five. You should uh not, especially when you're fighting against a good player with good defense that punishes properly. Don't follow that shit up every time. Sometimes working like a little sidestep or working like a dash in their face, delay your options just a little bit to fuck with them. That's how you open those people up to be more, to give them more incentive to actually take a risk and press something in those negative five situations. Plus five for you, negative five for them. And that's how you open up even more options. But if you're fighting against somebody that's just mashing buttons when it shouldn't be, how about that basically? Work in your fucking frame traps. Down forward one four. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament Seven. Leo, Leo. Like we saw earlier, Leo has the BOK three. That's plus nine. If they block that, you should definitely follow that up. <laughs> plus nine, you know. But in a situation like, let me give you an example. Paul, right? Who's gonna be the next character that I go through? I've been playing Paul online lately. Um. He has a lot of like these little like, oh, I'm at plus two, I'm at plus three moves on block. But he doesn't have a 13 frame mid poke. He has a 14 frame mid poke. So he has to do a lot of that. He has to do a lot of, oh, let me get you, you know, to press it when you shouldn't move around to open up like a magic four or a one two. You know? His only true mid frame trap in a uh, plus three situation is shoulder, which is 12 frames. But, like, super launch punish ball on block, right? Anyway, hold that up. So, back to forward, 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 three. So, yeah, this is a fucking cheat move. This is a really cheat move. Um, if you fight against Leo and you think the low is coming, you want to punish it. Oh, yeah, I was trying to check if there's a way to convert if he commits to the low. I don't think Leo can convert if he commits to the low. It looks like it's close, but at best, you might get a reset. That's it, come on. Yeah. Alright. At best, maybe near the wall. But in general, you have to only do the first two hits, and then you can convert. Damn, you really can't delay that at all. You have to press it real fast. Oh, 
Okay, and that also takes your tailspin away, your corpse root. So you have to like change up your combo accordingly. Okay. And once again, I'm sure there's no inherent tracking in the move. Oh! Maybe it's just me being slow. Let's put a walk in there. Woo! Another sub! Who's that? Who that? Signal! <laughs> I appreciate it, Vigo. Let me let the John Cena shit flow. I should probably change this. It's sub notification. I appreciate the sub. You didn't have to do it, but I'm glad you did. And once again, now my frame rate is shit. <laughs> so I have to restart the bot. Let me uh, do that right now. Thanks, I, I greatly, greatly appreciate the uh, subs or any support. You guys don't have to do it. You don't have to pay me for me to answer your question. So you can feel free to ask and I will answer it. But if you do throw a few uh, bones my way, I always appreciate it greatly. Alright, restarting the second bot now. And now I have to go through this, minimize this, drag this over here. I have to go into OBS and tell it, hey, stop looking at that window, start looking at this window. Alright. And, and my frame rate is okay now. Alright, let me take a swig of water over here if I can find my water bottle. Here we go. Woo! Yeah, Straggler, I didn't want to take money for that purpose, because um, NLBC, I was, I, I feel weird doing that, I don't know, I just feel weird. I don't mind, like, just donating, you know, if you want to donate my way in general, I appreciate it, you don't have to, obviously, once again, but if you do. But it's like, hey, like, this money's for you to go to NLBC, it makes me feel weird, it makes me feel like I have to play good. And if I play bad, I'll take it real bad, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though it's not, even though it's this... Even though I get that, you know, it shouldn't be that way. You don't have to think that way. It's just people, like, being kind and just go play. I, in my head, it would feel like it would feel like I'm sponsored. Like, oh, Strangler sponsored me. I got to do good. I got to not go 0-2. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. Like, Bloodhawk was also kind of to offer me to, like, basically sponsor me to go to NLBC uh, more times. And, you know, I, same thing, man. I tell him, man, I want to feel right. But I appreciate it greatly. Now I just can't do it because I have school on Wednesdays, so. I was only able to go that one time during the summer. Uh, Windex. Yes, I'm not playing PS4 right now. Oh, wait, you're asking me about... You said regular PS4. No, I got the Pro. Because my regular POS4 was fucking up on me. Basically, I had one of those launch POS4s with the, uh, the auto disc eject issue. And at first, a little trick, because uh, for those of you that don't know, there are launch PS4s. Launch PlayStation 4s. Had this one screw that was uh underneath you would go on the bottom side of it upward but you could just flip it upside down and go <laughs> point being it was a uh, emergency eject screw right and it was uh they were defective they were there for discs that would get stuck you would turn it it would spit out the disc like a physical uh mechanism and uh, a lot of them were defective so games you'll be playing would just start auto ejecting during play mine got worse and worse that fix started working less and less and the other fixes that people were talking about, like uh, doing the stupid hard reset, you know, unplugging it, holding the power switch, all that shit, it all stopped working eventually. So I was like, you know what? Before this gets to a point of no return, let me sell this to GameSpot, <laughs> to the GameStop near my uh, college, get some money out of it, and then just buy the Pro. And then that's what I did. <laughs> so I got like 110 bucks out of it, like a year ago. And now I got the, well, not a year ago, like almost six months ago now and I got the pro so yeah I'm rocking a uh, POS 4 pro all right so yeah this is a really really cheap move negative 12 negative 12 there is some pushback I noticed I mean not that I think you can make this safe but hard off Yeah, there is some pushback, but I don't think you... Yeah, nah. That's still in range for a jab, no matter who you're fighting against. Maybe there? Huh. Interesting. Nope. Still in jab range. Same character. The convenience of being the same character, you can check your jab range. Yeah. Alright. Alright. 
uh, unless there's some weird angle shit going on, axis stuff going on when blocking it, I'm sure you'll be able to consistently jab punish it. <sighs> Alright. <clears throat> so next, we got back forward 1 plus 2. Oh, is this uh, Leo's version of the SPOD? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's so, uh, SPOD for those of you that don't know, Akira from Virtual Fighter has the same fighting style, or rather Leo has the same fire style because Akira came first, as Akira from Virtual Fighter. And uh, one of his trademark moves is called the SPOD, the Stun Palm of Doom. And he would break your guard and hit you with this three hit power string. And it's basically this, this string, well, it's basically this string, this is Leo's first last string. Okay, that is a counter hit string. Is it any good in this game though? I don't know. I don't see it used, so I don't think it is. Okay, let's see. Negative 16. Uh, and it needs a counter hit. If it was regular hit and hit confirmable, then maybe. Wow, that first hit has no range. Negative 3 on hits. Negative 14 on block. Negative 24 on block. This is, uh... If I'm not mistaken, this used to be, in Tekken 6, a good way to end a jungle. I think. Now, I'm not so sure. I don't know what the purpose of this string is. Then there's the one more. That's the one you want to do. The course, that's course. This is back forward one pursuit, one pursuit. Course looking forward two. That was the way you want to end the jungle. Maybe it might still be good. Fifty-one damage. Uh, ne still negative sixteen. Same thing. Okay. Uh, and it still needs counter hit, right? Yeah, it still needs counter hit. It's just more damage. It's just make it's just a harder input to make it do more damage. Uh That's really hard to dash up into. I get that by accident. Ooh, the dragon off trick might work for this. Maybe not. Cause that's forward one plus two. I'm trying to get run back forward. Okay. Woo! What the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know what that move was. Oh man, even if you're off axis, that jungle sucks. Alright, 55. Wow, it's not coming out. One more damage. It's like Paul's de uh, demolition, man. This shit sucks. Walk carry, I guess. There's a just frame. Are you, are you indicating a just frame version beyond the blue sparks? Because the blue sparks is not just frame version. It's just a different input. It's just instead of two, you do quarter circle forward two. I guess you're right. Walk carry. Right? Uh, what is it? Yeah, I guess. Eh. Eh. I don't know about that, man. You can just keep doing like this stuff. You know, into the into the wall standing was it? Into the wall standing three, yeah, shit like that, right? Well, whatever. I'm no Leo main to know. Yeah, it does look useless. You're right about that. Anyway, uh, like I said, in Tekken Six, I believe it was the best way to end a wallless juggle for damage. Not the best way overall. The best way for damage. And I don't think it's any tracking on the first hit. Just know that no matter which hit Leo stops at, launch punish. For most of the cast, at least. Nah, maybe at this point, the whole cast. Everybody has 16 frames, right? Even Steve. Steve has, what is it, bat 2? 
or back one, whatever the fuck it was. No, back two. Back one is the counter. <clears throat> yeah, back back two is uh, 16. Uh, Huarang has uh, down forward two. Yeah. Uh, Gigas is down two. Electrics. Yeah, I don't think it's any character that is unable to launch negative 16. Whatever. Most of the cast. 99%, let's say. Just to play it safe. Uh, so next we got... I was gonna check the tracking. Yeah, there's no tracking on this shit. Next on the list. Slash kick while running three. I heard that... Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I thought that Leo could go into be okay out of this. Guess not. Still, this is a very, very, very good slash kick while running three. Right? 23 frames, so it's slow like any other while running uh, three. And uh, you can sidestep around it just like any other while running three. I think it might have a lower hitbox than other while running threes, though. And I think that Leo gets a full wall splat and is able to get a wall combo on this one. Yeah. And again, that's most while running threes. It's a, it is plus nine though, which is unlike a lot of while running pressure moves. Uh, which means it's just like the BOK three. You could do whatever the fuck you want after they block it. You could force whatever mix up because when your opponent is negative nine, they're not gonna sidestep linear fifteen frame moves. They're not gonna sidestep linear sixteen frame moves. They're probably not gonna be able to sidestep linear seventeen frame moves. Maybe let me take that back. Let's see. They're not gonna be able to sidestep linear fifteen sixteen frame moves. 17, you might be pushing it, depending on the opponent. So yeah, while running three, always a good pressure too. And especially when now that I've been playing a lot of the cast against other people, I'm like, every time I'm missing a while running pressure move, I feel it. Shaheen doesn't have one, Paul doesn't have one, and uh, Katarina has a really shitty one. It's not even, I don't want to even really call it a pressure move. It's just that it pushes back like Kazumi's while running two. Except I like Kazumi's while running two. It's way easier to sidestep. It's way slower. You can easily jab her out of it and follow her for a combo. You know, you get the idea. Um, but having these that are plus, and is there a spacing where she's not right in your face? It's been a while. There's a lot of active frames on this thing, I think. Yeah, this this is the kind of spacing where you probably should not follow it up. My recommendation. If you were, do something like with a lot of range like that. But don't follow it up with like down forward one pressure. <laughs> you know? Because they're one backdash away from fucking your whole shit up, right? If I were to put her to backdash. The blocking. Not even down forward two, which is a really good range move. See? You gotta be careful with this kind of stuff. Uh, oh, that range work. This is why it's important to familiarize yourself, even in a situation where you put yourself a plus nine. Familiarize yourself with the pushback of the move. Alright. Come on, I should easily be able to do that shit. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if that's like the tip. I'm trying to get just the tip, just the tip. All right, back one is pretty good. Good way to lock them down. Although back one has its risks, for those of you don't remember, most of the cast is able to sidestep that knee. But still, the fact that back one reaches, if they were to try to be cute and try to like, you know, press something because they see that kind of spacing, you're gonna counter hit them, and then on counter hit, you gotta juggle off the back one, right? You get the Boom, and an easy, uh, I say easy, but I dropped it, right? So whatever the fucking jungle is in that situation. Either way it goes, that is definitely an above average while running three. And uh, I call this slash kick a few times, for those of you that don't know. Slash, like, slashing with a sword. 
slash kick is a general uh, term for those while running threes. They don't all look the same. They don't all look like, sorry. They don't all look the same. They don't all act the same, but they are pretty much universally plus on block to varying degrees. And uh, there's a generic version that a lot of the cast has like, um, wow, I'm having trouble thinking of somebody right now with a generic slash kick. <laughs> I guess throughout the games, they slowly, uh, as they've been working in more characters, they've kind of been giving them unique animations. So, think like um, the, uh, the Mishimas, right? Like Jin and Devil Jin. In the case of Jin and Devil Jin, they're able to do crouch dash into up forward three. It's a shortcut for it. If you're doing a wave dash, you just tap up forward three. During the wave dash, you'll get a slash kick out of it. But they, that's the generic slash kick animation. So, yeah, I digress. While running three, great move. Yes, it could be sidestepped. If you get a little too obvious with it, a good player will fuck your whole shit up real bad. The thing about slash kicks is they almost always recover really slow. Right? So, like, if I'm dancing around... Whoop, what the fuck? I'm getting... That's... Uh, see? And you can get to the side or the back really easily. That's not the side. And then you'll eat shit like that, right? She recovers ducking for the first few frames, so... Whoop. You see that kind of... E it's really easy to get to the back. That's how you... If you don't know how to beat a slash kick... A lot of people, uh, new players especially, I always notice that when I start to pressure with rival running moves against them, they get terrified, terrified. They just like, oh, I just better stand still. At best, they might try to backdash, which is smart, sure. Backdash is something with, with punish, right? You really, when people get too obvious with these running moves, you need to sidestep. You need to. Not only do you need to sidestep, you need to be, be, be prepared for the situation being off axis. You might hit their side, you might hit their back, you might hit their front, but misalign. So you might have to do, see, see the way her legs were toward the screen? You might have to do a different juggle in that sort of situation. Also, don't press the button early because there's a lot of active frames on that. So if you size if you see the whiff and you press the button too fast, the end frames of that kick are gonna hit you. Even if you're already sidestep, you're sticking your button, your hurt box right into the kick. So let the whole thing whiff and then do your punish. Be prepared for certain characters landing into a ducking state like Ling Xiaoyu. Ling Xiaoyu lands into AOP. You see what just happened there? I got around the back and it still clipped me. You need to be prepared. These always have meaty hitboxes. These always uh, have like a couple of frames where they're airborne, they're ducking when they land. They always have a lot of plus on block situations. And uh, they always make the oppo opponent's character, or whoever's using the, the slash kick, move forward a lot. Of course, if they're also really obvious with it, you could also just challenge it with a button. And as long as you time it, even if it's like a jab, you could convert that into a juggle. But, not everyone does the slash kick from for while running pressure. Dragon off is while running two, he's not airborne during that. Uh, Gigas while running two shoulder, he's not airborne during that. So if you're going to challenge that, maybe do like a magic four instead. And if you happen to catch them in the counter hit frames, that's a big risk though. Especially against Dragon off, because of course, you need a while running some counter hit. You get some big damage juggle. Alright. Uh, Next on the list, while standing. Now, now we've got the while standing moves. Uh, next on the list is while standing one, which is the beginning of a three hit string while standing one, four, one. Uh, was that the uh, wall combo or was it while standing three? One, two. I think that's the wall combo, right? No, the while standing one is the wall combo. Right. Um, I don't think there's any purpose. While standing one, let's see, 13 frames. I mean, while standing one, four is a. Uh, 13 frame while standing punishing? No, it's not. How about while standing three one? That is, but that's trash. So here's the cool thing. I mean, depending on how you look at it, I think it's cool. About Leo's low block punishment. <clears throat> you only need to think about two situations. Negative 11 
between uh, negative 11 and negative 14. Not be between, say, I shouldn't say this properly. Between uh, negative 11 and negative 15. Negative 15 is where you use a different move. But negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, and negative 14 all have the same punish. Now that does suck in the in the in, in the uh, case that like a lot of characters tend to have an in between there between negative 11 and negative 15 or 16 for launch, where they'll be a little bit more powerful than their 11 frame. But the thing about Leo is 11 frame is way more powerful, probably the best 11 frame while standing punisher in the game, uh, outside of uh, Akuma and Eliza with meter who could crouch jab into a supper or FADC for Akuma. Um, most characters tend to only have a wall standing four that does not knock down. There's a couple that have a wall standing four that does knock down, but all that does is uh, gi uh, give them like good, uh, decent Oki. Not amazing, but decent Oki. Lily, Ling Zhao and maybe a couple, of, a couple of others I don't remember. Most of them ha will have like this generic wall standing four kick, like Dragon Off, Paul, uh, Jack. That's 11 frames. Just gives you a little chunk of damage. It's safe on block in case you fuck up. And there's nothing special about it. And it typically knocks the opponent back, so they can't really... It's a little hard to follow it up. Leo has, while standing for 1 plus 2. And that's 34 damage. That's a fucking shitload of damage. Most of those characters have those in-betweens, those 12, 13 frame moves. They do, uh, uh, like 25, 30. This is 34 for 11 frames. Easily the best 11 frame while uh, standing Punisher in the game. Yeah, it's a trade-off, though. Lost standing four is very unsafe. Lost standing four by itself. Negative two. Okay, not very safe, sorry. It's negative ten. <laughs> Lost standing four, one plus two, negative ten. Lost standing four into one plus two can be interrupted by ten frames. So essentially, there is no am I gonna finish it, am I not gonna finish it. If you block Leo's while standing four, ten frame. Ten frame every time. I don't know why I thought while standing four was worse than it was. Maybe I got it mixed up with the old like lay while standing three, which is ten frames and lost punishable. Whatever. Um, so if you're not slow like I was there, you get eleven frames, and you can exchange with twelve frames. Although it does knock down, so it's not a big deal. If a character has an 11 frame, though, an 11 frame um, Magic 4, that could be a massive thing to consider here in this one super specific situation. So if you're Leo and you're fighting against a character that has 11 frame Magic 4, I mean, it's such a specific situation, you're probably not going to see it. But that is a possibility here. They can fit in an 11 frame Magic 4 and launch you for trying to do that follow-up. And even if they, you know, if you do block the second hit, it's still, uh, it's a little awkward because the block stun is uh, a little heavy on it. Also, the wall standing four by itself, as you can see, shit range. That's the other trade-off. But the thing about wall standing four is Leo can uh, crouch dash into it really easily. Of course, it's a forward, so roll dash, really. Like, it could be inputted as course to go forward forward. Straight up, straight up. Or you could let, let the whole roll dash go and towards the end, four, one plus two. The cross circle forward, let go. You'll see the cross dash when you do it, the roll dash, whatever. Right? And then towards the end of it, four, one plus two. You'll get it. Because in this whole animation, you are technically considered crouching. Even though there are some unique moves out of it, like that low, that low, maybe that. Yeah, see, while standing two is different from course to go forward two. But there is no course to go forward four, so you'll get just your typical while standing four. Alright. Outside of that, there's two while standing 13 frame strings. Uh, one of them, I, I talked about this in part one, but one of them is really a wall combo, where the wall combo was go into full crouch, hit two, and then do the uh, while standing ba ba. I think it's while standing one four one. One four, and then delay the last one. For a low wall hit. I talked about this in the end at the end of my vi uh, part one video of Leo's Moveless Run 2, which is on the YouTube if you scroll down. <clears throat> uh, I don't know the purpose of the other wall standing screen. That's the other one. Wall standing 3, 1, 2. Let's see. It's negative 18, so it's launch punishable. Uh, it has some pushback, but you're still going to get launched. <laughs> uh, is there any counter hit properties on that last hit? Oops. I mean, 
Eh, it does that knock down, so maybe we got a free down four, but. Yeah, I don't know what the hell. And then it combos on counter here, right? Oh, man. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't see any reason to use this turn. I'm trying to think. It's not like the damage is great to, like, for you to risk, like, you know. If, if, if it were a situation where it was like, oh, while standing 3 1 and then the 2 was super buff, like, really good counter hit properties, then I would say, hey, it's something to think about every once in a while, right? Especially if you're fighting against someone that's ignorant to the matchup. But there's nothing special about that, too, in here. You get the same knockdown on regular hit and counter hit, which, like I said, it might give you a free dump or a stomp at best. Get a tracking. This is negative two on hit. I thought this was plus on hit. I ain't know. So we could uh, use negative two to test tracking. That's a pretty good. Uh... Okay, while standing one loses. While standing three. So while standing three, we'll track to Leo's right. Uh, while standing four, we'll two. And I think while standing two tracks really well in general. Take that back. So while standing three and while standing four track to the right. Okay, while standing one tracks left. While standing three tracks in both directions. Okay. So that makes that makes while standing three one maybe okay-ish. I don't know. And it is plus three, so. While standing four tracks both. And while standing two tracks left. Okay. Oh yeah, while standing one plus two. One of those. Negative 10. Woo! Got the rear. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Alright. Uh... Mm. Is this tackable? Plus. is 19 frames while standing one plus two is plus 22 guard she could guard right okay thought so okay so it's one of those uh fake plus 22s <laughs> it is plus 22 but it's one it's not one of those oh i get a free follow of 22s it's one of those plus 22s where they could guard so basically, if that wall standing one plus two connects, you get a, a huge mix-up. Although there is that spacing to consider, but still, plus 22. It's not like it was before with the wall running three, where it was plus nine with this kind of spacing. It's plus 22. So you can like dash up and make sure that your shit will catch them trying to do anything. Um, while standing one plus two startup is 13 frames. It is negative 15 on block, right? Any pushback on block? Oh, it's definitely a punish. What? What the fuck? What the hell's going on here? Oh wow, this is just a tip, so it's only 16 frames on this. I think this is one of those just a tip situations, so it's uh 16. But down forward two reaches. So. Damn, Leo's hawking sucks. <laughs> 16 with range. It's a good thing I checked this. So if you're fighting against Leo regardless of your character and you're thinking negative 15, consider the spacing. Test your punish before you assume, right? Down for two is reliable. Alright. So the while standing one plus two, so Leo does have an in-between here. 13 frames. Negative 13 punish, but it is less damage. So you trade you, uh, you trade off less damage, uh, 28 damage instead of 34 damage. So 
So you're trading uh, six damage for, whoops, for not that, for that knockdown at plus 22. Guardable plus 22. All right. Okay, so while standing two will be your 16 frame launch. So I was thinking, oh, 15 frame Leo could launch because of hot kick, right? But after seeing that pushback, fuck her up like that. I'm trying to think maybe this is an unreliable negative 15. I don't know. <laughs> so let's just go just to play it safe. Let's just say Leo launches while standing at 16. Bah, right? Because for those of you that don't know, from crouching, you could input uh, uh, in most instances, you could instantly input up forward moves and up moves, up four, up back moves, shit like that. You can instantly input that from crouching, which is uh, what gives Huarang a bootleg while standing 17 frame jungle starter now, because he has up back 3 4 or 4 3 some shit now, new move. Uh, historically, Huarang didn't really have a while standing launcher. Leo, you could do up forward 4 instantly from crouching, but spacing might fuck up the 15 frame aspect of that. Uh, I said not everybody, or like maybe everyone with an asterisk, because Lee Chalan, who I went over already, was the last character I went over. And uh, Martial Law have unique moves from crouching. If you try to input up forward 4 from crouching, you'll get weird shit. Outside of certain instances, at least. Because they have full crouch up forward and up forward forward shit like that as, as unique moves. Uh, so yeah. Let's just say negative 16, and at negative 16, use this while staying to don't use the hop kick. Yeah, like two more damage, and you know, you get the same, pretty much the same juggles. So, it's more damage. Also, the spacing is reliable. It has a lot of, it has good range. It's one of those that you catch people from pretty far. Like uh, it's actually like if I'm not mistaken, wall standing two is what Leo players like to use to mix up full crouch. They'll, they'll like crouch ass. They'll crouch ass in your face, right? And they'll they'll go uh, see crouch ass with the duck in your face. So that makes the opponent think about two lows: full crouch, down forward three, cross second forward one. Two reasons to duck. Or crush. So you do this. Uh, I have trouble doing it. You do this, and then you go to while standing too. See, and it looks it looks natural. It looks like you'll hit at about the same frame as the low. Okay. You can pretty much make it look like the timing will hit in the same frame. So there is no OS duck stand kind of shit going on, you know. Of course, it is risky because while standing too is one negative twelve. Negative 13. That's actually worse. A lot of wild standing launches tend to be like 12. Negative 12. So negative 13. So you gotta take that risk if you want to run that sort of mix-up. Of course, if you want to run like a safe mid mix-up, you could probably do this wild standing, which is uh, safe on block, right? Whoa! It's not safe on block. Never mind. This shit sucks. This is one of those. If I put this to 15 frames, I might get hit by that high in the end. <laughs> Never mind that. How about this? Uh, it's mid low. It's mid low. I don't know how I feel about that. So if you're gonna run a full crotch mix up with Leo, you have to take risks on the mid option. And that's not even natural. If the first day hits you, you have to block the second. You can't low parry. Yeah. Oh well. You can't have it all, Leo. But your mid option will always be some variation of risky. So just go for the launcher. Don't even bother with the with the other shit, you know? Like a lot of, a lot of other characters on the full cost mix up, they'll at least have like a generic while standing forward that's safe on block, right? But Leo doesn't even have that. So if you're gonna do the risk, just go for the launcher, get the high reward. As your mid option. All right. Uh, oh, you can also do that out of quarter circle forward also. While standing one plus two. Full crouch down forward three. Pretty much talked about this already. This is a fucked up move. So once again, on regular hit, you could uh, do that. And if, if people try to do it, you know, fuck up the execution. You got to put enough of a dash in it. There it is. You can't do instant forward forward, so you have to do forward forward, hold forward for like a few frames, and then add some range to it, and then get the two. 
Otherwise it whips like that. I don't know if it hits them if they stay down a side roll. Okay. So they have to stay down and do out of side roll or to stay down to make that whiff. And that opens up other options like maybe not that. But you could dash up until I got down four, you know? You could, um... I'm trying to get up and do another crouch dash. I definitely feel like I've seen Leo players do that after that hits. Like, you know, they, they, if they get you to stay down, it gives Leo basically a free dash up into a full cross mix-up, right? So, like, you know, you get it, and then bam. And then they get up after they get hit. You know, after they side roll, then they get up. Then all of a sudden you could either do another one, or bop, right? Vortex. An unsafe Vortex, but a Vortex still. Maybe that's not a proper vortex, is it? No, no, that's that's not. I'm using that term wrong. Vortex is when they block it, you're still at enough plus to reset the vortex, right? That's what it is. Whatever. You get the idea. As long as they get hit, you could keep looping it into itself, those options. And as long as you keep guessing right, you're good to go. But the moment you guess wrong, you're going to get punished. Especially as this low is now lost punishable. If I'm not mistaken, in Tekken Tag 2 and Tekken 6, it was only negative 14. But now, it's, oh, when you block it, get fucked, right? It gets the uh, block stun animation, and it's negative 26. So, delayed hop kick punishable. Right. Ha! Right. If you have that, not every cat has delayed hop kick. If you have that option, it's typically going to be your most damaging way to punish shit like that. If you're not confident in that input, just do your typical while standing launcher, right? If you're Huang, well, I already, I, I kind of said before, Huang had now has a proper while standing, like bootleg while standing Punisher. But even then, that one is actually like a low damage juggle starter. You could totally just cross cancel and do back three. What's it called? Plasma Blade with Huang. You know, you get more damage. Even Leo, you could cross cancel down forward two. You can up forward four. You know? Go that shit. So another thing about this move, let's switch stages so I can show it. Uh, well, Mr. Kiba, Tekken, you're gonna get beat up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot while you're learning. You just gotta try to make the learning process as fun as possible. Don't go into Tekken trying to win. If you're new, if you even if you're not new to fighting games, you're the fucking man at, at, at whatever other fighting game you play. If you come into Tekken. You can adapt those skills, yes, but it's gonna be a rough fucking road. It's always gonna be a road. I don't care how smart, how good you are, how your reactions are. Sure, that will help you, you know, along the way. But at a certain point, that gap of knowledge is gonna keep hitting you like a fucking truck. You just gotta keep walking forward. And sure, a truck is gonna come and push your ass back. But then you're gonna walk forward, and another truck is gonna come and push your ass back. The more you learn, the less trucks are gonna be coming, and the more you can start dodging those fucking trucks. Like Frogger, while you're still moving forward. Eventually, though, another truck is gonna come and hit you ass back. And then eventually, you're gonna get to a point like where I'm at right now, right? I've been playing this series at a competent level since, let's say, the end of Tekken BR. I started learning Tekken at 5.0 in Chinatown Fair. So I've been playing this series for a while, right? I learned fighting games through Tekken. You get to where I'm at, my problem is I've been playing inconsistently because I didn't like Tekken 6 very much, and I really didn't like Tekken Tag 2. So I, I've, I've been, I haven't been playing consistently. If I had been playing that whole time up to now, I'd be a lot better, trust me. Uh, but you get to where I'm at, I'm at that level where it's like, I don't know everything about the game. still a lot I have to learn, which is why I do these run throughs. Um, but I do know enough to get have a general idea of how to approach, like, breaking down each move, like I'm doing here. I might miss some stuff. You know, every once in a while I'll get some people that play these characters and be like, you missed this, you missed that, right? But still. I know what to look for in the move. I think I have a general good idea of what makes certain moves good. Like, I can see that kind of stuff. And then it makes it more rewarding to go through the moves like this. 
And then you start making those small steps towards getting better instead of the big leaps. The big leaps in getting better come early. And they're very satisfying. When you pass each of those thresholds, it's very fucking satisfying. You'll see those scrubby people that have been beating you, all this fucking mashy, this mashy one on players fucking me up. And then you learn how to punish a couple of those things they're doing, and that's enough to get you over that hump. You'll start beating them. Then you run to them again a little later when you start beating more Huanang stuff, and you'll fucking mop the floor with their fucking face. It's a very good feeling. And Tekken has a lot of that going on constantly, 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 constantly. Why well, didn't I like... What's up, F Crush? I don't know if you uh, if you heard this from Strangler, but I want to play you. I don't know about today anymore, but I feel like shit. But <laughs> why didn't I like Tekken 6? Because... That's when the they started introducing shit like uh, it started with Lily in DR. Uh, a lot of the shit where it's like this character's ducking mids, right? That was a thing before Tekken Six, but that's when it started to get out of fucking control. You know the rule breaking shit, as Aris says. It started to get out of control in Tekken Six, and it's only gotten worse since. Uh, it's still out of control in this game. It's even worse in this game than it was before. But I like enough about the uh, the other things in this game that. It doesn't bug me much, as much. Um, but yeah, it all started with Lily, and then Tekken 6 Lars and fucking Bob. Oh, fucking Bob, bro. If it wasn't for Bob, I might have given Tekken 6 more of a chance. But the combination of Lars and Bob, I don't, you know, I don't find Elisa as annoying, but I don't like her character design. I didn't like any of the new characters. Marduk was probably his one of his worst versions in Tekken 6. It felt like he was a, he wasn't a complete character, you know. And uh, Tekken Tag 2 is probably the best version of Marduk, but I have a lot of other issues with Tekken Tag 2. The damage started to get really crazy with the fucking bound system, and it got worse in Tekken Tag 2. I hate all that shit. Uh, so we're trying to get to the wall, right? So here we go. So this fucking sweep is super cheap because when you hit it, regular hit the wall, you get the second one for free. Now, after the second one connects, that's when things start getting weird, and I have to test this on myself. I've heard that if you counter hit, you get three in a row. I don't know if that's true. I don't think so. Let me uh, switch places and record it on myself. F Crush, while you've been gone from Discord, I just want you to know I've been talking a ton of shit about you. And I'm still talking a ton of shit about you. I'll be nice to a certain point. You're still a bitch. Um, okay, what was I gonna do? Oh, yeah, record. And uh, now, not really even in regards to Tekken, this is in you as a human being. So, you see the way I got knocked down that second time? Hmm. That makes that throw unguaranteed, I think. Ah, I see. Alright, let's turn that one off. Record. Looks like it doesn't need counter hit. So this has always made me curious. There's got to be a way to avoid that third one, right? That's how you do it. All right. This is oh, this is fucked. All right, so because of the properties of this knockdown, here's what's going on, right? You don't need counter hit at all. If you're Leo, you only get two guaranteed at the wall like this, right? 100%. So what's happening is, if I were just like get hit by the first one and hold down back, it's gonna knock me down in a specific way. Like, if I'm holding down back right now, you see? You see the way I got up and it knocked me down head towards? That makes the third one guaranteed. So if you fight against Leo, what was supposed to what you're supposed to do here is let the second one hit you and then hold down back. You have to just stay down, eat the second one. If the first one knocks you down, don't press anything. Don't fucking try to side roll maybe. Yeah, you could like side roll, I guess, but like that's not really gonna do much for you in that situation. Either way it goes, 
Block this, uh, block the third one. Let the second one hit you, and then gotta block the third one. Yeah, I know Yicheng. I mean, I know him. Uh... I don't really care. <laughs> Alright. See, so I didn't know about that. Now you all know. Uh, if you're a Leo player, if you notice that, so you can go pretty much, you can go pretty ham on people, even at a mid level. If they don't know about that, I feel like that shit connects so many times to so many fucking people. And it's a ton of damage. That shit is a ton of fucking damage. 24 damage, and then what, the other ones are like 19 damage, or some shit like that? That shit took off a fucking grip. That shit takes off a fucking grip. Three of those back to back, that's pretty much a jungle. So yeah, I don't think uh, Full Cross uh, Don 4 3 has any real tracking to it. Yeah, maybe some. Oh, that's why. Okay. So I don't cast step. Probably because of how slow it is. How slow is it? It's 21 frames. What does uh, RB Norway say? RB Norway says 21. Okay. 21 frames. 21 to 23. So. so it's not seeable. Oh yeah, another thing about you new people coming to Tekken. A lot of new people coming to Tekken assuming that lows are seeable. Like they assume that the only low is like not seeable shit like this. Bullshit. This, you might think it's seeable, especially if you come from 2D and you look at it you're like, oh, 21 frames, that's totally seeable. It's not. It's not seeable. It's not, it's not, it's not. Unless you're on some fucking crazy crack and shit like that. On some fucking, I don't know, some pills of some sort. You're probably not going to see this. And even if you are, you're not going to see it consistently. Generally 24, maybe? 24, 25 frames or slower, that's seeable. That's seeable if you're sharp. 30 frames, like snake edges, you need to make sure that that is seeable. That you're not like blocking it on a guess. You need to block it on reaction. Never block a snake edge style move on a guess. This, that's not seeable, that's 20 frames. This is not something that you're gonna look out for and block in time, it's not. It's just not, trust me on that one, okay? No matter how good, you know, there are some players that it seems like they make you, they trick you to thinking that they're seeing it. They're not. That's not seeable. While running, uh, while you mean while standing too, not while rising. I said that already, at fresh. Yeah, because Leo doesn't have a, a safe mid uh, option to mix up with the full cast top four three. So you can do cross the forward while standing too, which I can't do all the time. There it goes. Oh yeah, I forgot there's a course to the forward too. So you have to do it dragon off style. There. You have to let the stick. You have to do down, down, forward. Let go, let go of the stick. There it is. Prefer preferably, if you look at my command capture recording, you don't want it to register a forward. Ideally, if you do course to the forward into while standing too. But uh, Leo's is actually a lot more forgiving than Dragonos. Dragonos Cross Circle 4 4 comes out way too easily. Leo's Cross Circle 4 4 actually. Yeah, see? I got a full Cross Circle Forward there. And then let the stick go to neutral and hit 2, and I still got it. If this were Dragonos, that, it wouldn't allow that when his while standing 4. Either way it goes, that's how you do like a cross jazz to fake going, you know, low like that. And you got the while standing 2. Take some practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Alright. The full cost down 14, you want to walk around it, because it's slow. A lot of uh, Leo players will like delay a little bit with like a little step, little shimmy fold once or twice, which will make it realign. So you should sidewalk it. Alright. And when you block it, punish it hard. Remember, when you back it to the wall, let the second one hit you before doing anything. Do stuff after the second one hits you. Alright. Next. Nice at one plus two. 
This is one of those mids for Wasp Blast is negative 10. I mean, she has a lot of mids for Wasp Blast, but he's another one. Uh, is there anything special about this move? Oh, counter hit, you get that weird nasty knockdown, which means you could probably dash, uh... Oop. I need a wall to actually get some guaranteed shit here. Negative two. So it's guaranteed you fast enough if you delay it. How much did I get there? I gotta see it because the second bot is stupid with this. Wow, plus 11 off of that one. Plus 3. Hmm. I mean, you should just get the guaranteed follow up anyway. And since I know that you can get this guaranteed like that, you could probably floor break, right? <laughs> that size that 1 plus 2 is negative 10, but I should check the pushback as well. In this situation, probably because it's not a comboing, so it's counting as hitting grounded. Even if it is guaranteed, it won't floor break. Maybe I'll do a little faster. That doesn't move forward at all. Lots of be jumping fucking backwards with that shit. All right, let's record. He's doing it on me. That might have been too slow, but let's see. Oh, looks like it's guaranteed. So, one place where you probably will get better stuff is near the wall. Oh shit, it doesn't wall splat. On counter hit. On regular hit it probably does, right? Yeah, on regular hit it does. Let me not do this. But when you're like near the wall, face me. Okay. Like here maybe? Oh no, it doesn't it doesn't restand. I tried to pass it to a crouching two jab. Uh, how about this? Negative 10. Let's see a block on this one. Ah, you can make it safe, depending on the spacing. The Giga's to probably punish that. Wow. <laughs> Feels 10 frame sucks. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, this is interesting. Huh. Weird. Uh, since it's a sidestep move, don't really need to test the tracking, we know. If you don't know, the sidestep realigns, like I said earlier. 
so it's gonna track. That's what's gonna fuck it up, right? Because it's a slow move. What is it? 19. It's one of those slow moves that makes it lean forward, so you have to like do a deeper sidestep to catch a uh, walk. But like I said, since you're already sidestepping, you're gonna realign, you just have to delay it a little bit. It doesn't seem like a bad move, especially since uh, the pushback can fuck with people's block punish, so. It's a nice uh, little power mid to have. 30 damage with some counter hit properties, knocks down on regular hit. It's pretty good. Leo has a lot of that shit, though. It's basically like this, right? A slower version of that. So, next we got back turn. Stand wall. Uh, let's turn on sidewalk. <laughs> Let's start with the back, right? Ah, I've seen this before. This is well. 11 frame mid. Oof, 11 frames, dude. But this is super unsafe. No counter here properties. It is an 11 frame mid, though. I don't know how to record this situation. can't really do this. Uh, Leo can't put himself back to him. I just want to see what it's like on block, so let me, um, let's look at the pushback. That's really all we gotta see. The limitations. Okay, there's some pretty serious push block. Unfortunately, it's really hard to set up a recording scenario to, block, to actually block punish it, but it is negative 20. So you gotta do some long range shit. I mean, right now, you can see, I'm not reaching with uh, any of that shit, right? 444 was uh, 19 frames. Uh, mm, nah, 442 probably, right? Yeah, 442 for Leo, I guess. What up, Psycho ST? Oh shit, what up, duck? How the way it goes, you got an 11 frame mid from back turn. A really fast one. A very risky one, but a very fast one. Uh, what's this? This is weird. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That's supercharged. Oh, that's what it's saying. Okay. Ah, so you don't get this is back 3 1. If you have supercharge on, back 3 1, 1 plus 2. I forgot that Leo has this kind of shit. That's a natural combo screen. Negative 15 on block. After a supercharge. So I messaged before is like gimmicky ass shit like um like uh this or that and you can start running like this as your mid uh that string as your mid option. Keep in mind, negative fifteen if they block it. Uh do you keep the sparks if they block it? Do you keep the uh Ah, oh, you still got the key charge. Alright. Uh, what that means is you're still unable to block your negative 15. That means they could do the slowest counter hit move on you, of, <laughs> the slowest fucking counter hit move they, they want to do. And they'll be able to punish you. And they're going to get a counter hit properties because you're still uh, key charged after that's blocked. So that's some risky ass shit if you want to roll that mix up. Also, the actual low option with a key charge is same thing. That's back forward, uh, 
down forward four one two. She only has her key charge, right? Yeah. So you can do that, dash up. Or you can do it. Dash up and then uh, uh, at least it's not a force 50-50 off of the Oki. Maybe it is if you wall combo or some shit. I think I've seen people try to do that. I think I've seen Gamble try to do that shit. How minus... It's a second hit. Uh, negative seven. Negative seven. And I don't think there's any special properties on the... Uh... Yeah, no. You just get that palm thrust on the last hit. So if you want to try and get cute and put yourself at negative seven and then go for a 20 frame low, you can totally do that. <laughs> you gotta really hope your opponent is frozen up. At the very least, what you can see here is it's mid-mid. So that's one nice thing about it. Hell, if you happen to be in a um, rage uh, rage state, it might not be the worst. Like This is some super gimmicky pocket sand shit. But if I were in rage mode, Let's test this. Let's look at this scenario and see how much total damage we get out of it. Right? Theor uh, theoretically, let's say like, I, um, I were the you know a Leo and my opponent was somebody else. Let's say I'm the two-player Leo right now and I'm in rage and they have full health. Let's see how much total damage we'll get out of this setup, assuming that I, I get, you know, I guess right every time, right? So let's assume that I'm the Leo. Oh, actually, I should actually test, uh, check what the, uh... So I'm the Leo, I got Rage. I land a 4-4-2, I get 27 damage, right? Oops. Oh, you can't do it without wasting off of that. You can't do the key charge. You have to waste rage? Fuck. Um, but then let's say I get the low counter hit then. So, I land a little counter hit, 38 damage, and I get the key charge. Ah, oh, you can't do it! Can't do it! <laughs> Not enough frames. I thought you needed 8 frames uh, to get armor. I'm sorry, I thought you needed 6 frames to get armor. Can't do super. Let me try to mash it out one more time. It's, it's gonna overlap. That negative seven really sucks for you. That negative seven really, really sucks for you. So you you basically be relying on their ignorance to not, you know. I don't know. I suppose you could try to like run that negative seven, uh, you know, that safe on block shit. The problem is you're not really gonna be able to sidestep, right? Like right now, if I was to do this sidestep, let's say that, right? So I'm like, what are you gonna do at negative seven? A 
Especially if you're running ra you know, raid, right? Uh, 18 was that? 18 frames? Back one? 18 frames. Point being, your opponent will have a lot of options to just press something, hit you, and get a counter hit because you're still going to be key charged. Just any magic four is going to hit you. Any any magic four. You know, and it's like, oh, then I'll duck. Well, then any 13 frame mid counter hit tool, <laughs> count hit or not, just 13 frame tool is going to hit you. And they know they're no, you know, the opponent knows you're not going to be able to block. The good opponent will know you're not going to be able to block, and they're just going to run the counter hit string if they have it. Do that, right? <clears throat> no, if the super doesn't work, armor will not work. They need the same amount of frames. I don't even know what Leo's armor is. So. Oh, also, what's the armor? You might know Leo's armor, but I don't remember. That punch parry might be your only option, but it's a punch parry. One plus two. See? The third scene frame mid. That's all I gotta see. There. Not to mention that. <laughs> You, got, you pretty much got nothing. So I guess what I'm saying is just finish the turn. If you're going to guess mid, finish the turn. Unless you want to completely 100% capitalize on the ignorance of your opponent. Because if they delay their input for whatever reason because of the third hit, then stuff like armor or rage uh, art will work. Probably. Unless they're mashing on jabs. Or magic force. <clears throat> Alright, next we got <clears throat> can K stance. Forward form. There's a lot of ways to go into can K stance. Whenever you see this knee, there's like strings that go into it back one floor, right? Whenever you see that knee, K and K stance is automatic. And uh, I talked about this last time, but K and K2, uninterruptible, cannot sidestep, counter hit, double starter, right? Uh, K and K, 1, 2 is a natural combo, I believe. Uh, yeah. It's a slow option, though. It is a high. I think it's like for juggles, right? It's 18 frames. K and K, 2 is the fast one. 13 frame high. K and K, uh, 3 is a hop kick. That does launch, and you do get a juggle out of it. And then K and K 3 4 is a fucking Can Can style hop kick or Julia's up forward 4 3, whatever that annoying ass shit was. So then you gotta think about if you're trying to punish this, is there only gonna be one or is there going to be two? I fucking hate that shit so much. 12 frames for both, and I think 13 frames for the first one. Yep. Negative 13 for the first one, negative 12 for both kicks. If you try to, like, assume that the first one is coming and punish it, and then the second one hits you, if I'm not mistaken, you will still get launched. That's how it is for uh, Julius, right? Oops. No. I don't know if you can delay him. But... Okay, no, it, it, it jails. But at the very least, it doesn't let you, so you can kind of mash out your punish. Unless uh, there's a delay in there. Nope, there's no delay. Okay. It just makes it weird, because it makes it so you kind of have to mash out this punish. If you think that that hockey commit is coming. That's good. Maybe Judas was like that, and I just don't remember. So there's no reason to let Leo get away with just doing one. And then there is, of course, that. That low. And uh, someone, uh, when I did part one of this, someone in the chat mentioned thinking that you could fuzzy it. You cannot. The low is, sorry, the low is uh, 20 frames. The mid is... Seven, uh, 20 frames. 17? Well, 20 frames. The mid, the launching mid is 20 frames, the lowest 20 frames. There's no, you can't fuzzy that. They're hitting on the same frame. If you're doing any sort of fuzzing on it, it's because the opponent is delaying it on their own. 
trying to do like a big ass heavy delay. Really lets you see the stance to like buy into the mix up. That's what's going on. So, um, as the Leo player, if you're the Leo player, you should know. Once they block that knee, you could force the mix up on that. It's too late. They have to buy into the mix up and do. There are some specific tools they can use to try to get around the mix up. Like some characters might have like a, a nice little like backswing style move that'll fuck up some of the options. Then you that, that that forces you to use other options. Like maybe, maybe, right? Like that. Um, example, right? <laughs> but then when you do both, that happens. Because you keep moving forward. See? I didn't even know that would happen, but now I know, and now you know if you're a Leo player. So if you're a Leo fight against another Leo, maybe you just want to do that anyway. Because then what ends up happening is... Let's see if you have enough frames to actually do it, though. Away from that. Nope, you don't. You don't have enough frames for the high crush aspect to activate. Then the low is gonna counter hit you too, probably, right? But now, uh, now that I see, so now that I see all this, now that I see if the high counter hits you, and that both kicks makes it whiff, that makes this a much less valuable offer to me. That just makes you say, "Hey, just block punishing." If if that crushed both of the kicks and comp and uh, connected as the launcher, I would have said that's an option worth doing. Because then if you think the mid is coming, you get way more reward than you would just block it, right? You would just get that or whatever the fuck you're, uh, I don't know, what's the 12 frame? Is that what it is, right? 13 frame? That's 13 frame, so you wouldn't even get that shit. You would have get a 12 frame only. Whatever the 12 frame punishes. So yeah, uh, some other characters might have some of the uh, unique options. So if you're testing, punishing against Leo, check those kinds of options. Check your dragon, of course, circle back two, the back swing blow, right? Check pause, back forward one, elbow into death. Fist. Check that shit. Check you know whatever the fuck else other characters have. It might it might have better payoff. And uh, check what it loses, so of course. The big one is the high, the back fist, the two. That's the big one. So either way it goes, that's the K and K. The knee forces the mix-up. The risk of the mix-up will depend on the matchup, the opponent, all this shit. Some most people will tend to just be like, I'm just gonna low parry or duck or just stand and block, you know? The K and K2 is safe on block. And that's what stops the sidesteps. This might be my job, I should check this. Hold on a second. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Okay, good. Um, the two, the the K and K two stop sidestepping. The other options, if I'm not mistaken, you can totally sidestep them. So you have to go left for the double hop kick, and if you step left, the second one will clip you. So you have to walk it. And then the low. You can't OS this because the second kick is uh, mid, right? So you can't just like end a low parry because you're going to get hit by a second. Kick. Maybe you could do this. Do the mid. Do the mid. Do the mid. Come on. The mid. Yes. Manny found an OS. So, rewind. I said earlier, the mid and the low uh, connect on the same frame, right? The mid is two hits. The first hit of the mid connects to the same frame as the low. Therefore, because they're both slow, 20 frames, 
you could still work in enough movement to sidestep the mid, right? You could work in enough movement. Uh, the low, since it hits on the same, okay. Um, my brain is not working. Let's try again. They hit on the same frame, right? But it's 20 frames. That's a big window for you to work in any sort of sidestep. So the thing is, the middle hit me, um, if I try to stand and duck, but because the mid is so, like, linear. Is this the mid? Yeah. Because the mid is so linear, I don't even need a big uh, commitment on a sidestep. And because it's 20 frames, I could do this shit super early because it's so linear and still get around it before the mid would theoretically connect, which is like it will theoretically connect on the same frame as the low. Because I'm already out of the way on my little slight sidestep on the mid, I could just fuzzy low parry the low and then stand block. And because the double mid has such a big gap, I could work in the fuzzy low parry in the gap between the two mids to low parry the low and still stand block the second kick. Uh, that was probably a very convoluted way of explaining what I just did there. Point being, you could sidestep, slight sidestep left into a fuzzy low parry stand block, right? Bop, bop, bop. Just like that. Bop, bop. And it would beat out both the mid and the low option. Does that make sense? That probably doesn't make any sense, right? You guys get the idea, do you? You guys that have been around for a while get kind of get what I'm saying. You guys that are newer probably like, what the fuck is he talking about? This guy's an idiot. OS. Option select. You're inputting a command to beat, every, uh, to beat out multiple options. Not every option, multiple options. Sometimes it'll beat out every option. In this case, you still have to worry about the uh, pop, right? There's, not, there's nothing really you can do about that. If I were to try to sidestep, I'm gonna get punched in the face. See? You can't even start a sidestep. Too much. Too fast. Yes, I'm doing a super small sidestep, right? Because the mid is super linear. A small sidestep already gets me out of the way of the mid before it's even active, right? And then uh, slight low, quick low parry to catch the low after I get out of the way of the mid. Fuck. And then stand block in case the double mid is coming and I'm out of the way of the first hit of the double mid and then the second mid I block. Yeah, you follow? This is very hard to do, and not every character is going to be able to do this. Depends on how good their size step is. This is very hard to do, but if you can get this consistently, you can make this uh, whole thing a, a hell of a lot less scary. Because at the very least, is this the, the high will beat that out, right? And it will spin. Uh, but you're risking 18 damage instead of mashing and eating a jungle, right? If you try to mash, you're going to eat a jungle. So the risk is 18 damage plus the spin to give Leo mix-ups, because every time you see those spin, you get free mix-ups. You just gotta worry about the space. So like what, uh, the spin is like what? Plus 15 for Leo. FYI, that high is safe on block. Not only is it safe on block, it's negative four, so Leo could totally still sidestep after it. So that's a nice little OS, I guess, if you, you would have to drill the shit out of that, I think. As long as you work in that side step to your left, as long as you're able to, you could totally uh, use that shit in this matchup. All right, the K and K low doesn't have any counter properties, right? Yeah. Oh no, it does. Plus four. Plus fourteen. Is that a plus fourteen guard break? It's the fake plus, uh, you know, plus 14, the 14 frame advantage, but they could still guard. Okay, so next we got K and K2, spin, 15 frames. T uh, K and K2 is also a tail spin, the back fist, so you see me do that every couple of times, right? And K one down. Ooh. Ah, that goes into Bach. So K and K one is that high that's 18 frames. And then you could just fuck with people by uh, adding a layer to the mix up, right? 
you go to Bach, you can throw in the Bach 3, and then you can keep pushing pressure. And then if they press something, then you got K and K 1, 2, which has counter hit properties. Which is this. Bam! That's a knockback on counter hit. Now, K and K 1, 2 on block is only negative 12, so it's not the worst risk in the world to take, right? Let me see if you can size it. Have to block it. Alright. You can duck though. And that's the other thing. K and K2, of course, it's a high. You can duck. Okay. Yeah, hungry. Alright, um so you know just K and K1 can be interrupted. No, it cannot. Too many close frames to interrupt the 18 frame highs. So this is, this is interesting. This makes K and K1 better than I thought. Right? I thought, oh, K and K1 2 is kind of whatever, right? Is it natural combo also? Yeah, it's natural combo. 31 damage. Not, not bad. You're still able to, even if you block both, you're still able to block them. Um... So basically, that makes the situation. That makes it like, all right, you go into K and K. I do the one. You could delay the two. Okay, there, that's about as much days you could put. You can also just do it back to back. Uh, if you delay it, it's still uh, it looks hit confirmable. Yep, it's hit confirmable. Reminds me of this. No, what was it? That? That. It reminds me of that, which is also hit-confirmable, right? Um, so it's hit-confirmable, and you can just fuck with people by going this down into that. Because they're gonna be scared of the second hit. So you could delay the second hit regardless. No matter what, you can always delay the second hit, right? And then when they get afraid of the second hit, you go down, you go into that for more pressure. If it happens to hit them moving whatever reason, you get a juggle on normal hit now, which I don't think it give you before. And uh, you could just further fuck with them by doing this, going down, uh, uh, you know? Be okay, cancel the be okay. So there's a lot of layers to this. To really mess with the opponent's head. interesting so the four four k and k me if you tap down forward you go into a crouch dash on hit that's plus one not the biggest deal in the world right but it is plus one so if they do anything slower than a jab that's gonna interrupt of course as you saw just now the jab exchange 11 frame all standing for so you could do this shit to stop them from jabbing and then when they stop jabbing, that's when you go, uh-uh, or, you know, forward up to that. Well, not that. That. Alright, that's pretty much the KK stuff. This is one, two, three, or four, and then one, two is a string, one down to go to Bach, or three, four to do the double hop kick. Next is a uh, box. I feel like I went through the box stuff last time. And just to go through the KK mix up one more time. The two is safe on block, stops smashing, stops movement, is everything, all that, but it's a high. Uh, and then you mix up the low four with the three. You have to. You cannot retain the frame advantage on, uh, by canceling out a KK. You don't retain the frame matches. At best, you can cancel it to this for plus one on hits. On block, though, nothing. Uh, you do force this KK mix up on block, though, because 
four four into Kane Kane on block is like plus nine or some shit, right? That's why I'm unable to interrupt the uh, 18 frame high. Four four Kane Kane. Yeah, it's plus eight to plus nine. It says you're an RB Norway. Oh, on hit it's plus 14. Wait a second. No, it's it's. It's, if it's plus 14, it's plus 14 like that they could guard. It doesn't say that in RB nowhere for some reason. Because they're able to guard this 13 free pot. So that's bullshit. So anyway, on hit or on block, uninterruptible. Uninterruptible. Alright, be okay. Uh, down one plus two, full couch. So BOK is down one plus two to go into it in a uh, neutral situation. From full crouch, you can just hold down and press one plus two. And you can hold down back. Press one plus two. You can see my buttons, my input recording on the bottom there. You could, uh, you could hold the... Oop, don't fuck up like I just did. So right now, I'm just kind of holding the two and hitting one over and over again. You can do the super little dance. A little taunt there if you want. Now, I said this earlier. There is no low out of this. The actual BOK okay options are 1 2, which is Min Min. Natural combo. No delay on it. But that's the fastest option. 13 frames. Natural combo, normal hit, uh, plus 2 on the second hit, plus 9 on the first hit by itself. First hit by itself is a negative 4 on block. Negative 4 on block, both hits, negative 14, with some pushback. So the risk of this will depend on the opponent, the character. Alisa will punish this hard. Brian, if his jet upper reaches, it will launch you. Mashimas can electric you if they don't fuck up for doing this home block. Um, whoever the hell else has 14 frame launchers in this situation. Uh, Shaheen with uh, Rage Drive, he could launch you for this. Down back two four. Uh, so yeah, so there's risk. Depending on the matchup. Either way it goes, the reward is decent. Decent enough to use on someone that cannot launch you, I'd say. And the one by itself isn't so bad. Like I said, safe home block plus nine, that's nice. Alright, so now that we got that, so I talked about the transitions into the stance. Ah, three plus four, four. Law has that now. Thank you, forgot about that move. Uh, I talked about the transitions to the stance in part one, the frame of matches that they give you. So that's why it's important to know that 13 is your best. So if you're at plus four, this is uninterruptible. Plus four or better. Right. I forgot what transitions is into the stance right now. Four, four, three does, right? Yeah. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Four, four, three, you need to hit the later frames to get a uh, decent amount of frame matches. There is another bonus. So even at plus one, this is probably going to crush highs. So 4-4-3, four, four, hold down. That's plus one on block. Ah, but it forces crouch. So that's going to hit you. 11 frames. 13 frames, though, you'll interrupt. 12 frames, you'll uh, trade with. So the risk you're taking by doing this is matchup dependent. But, like I said, if you set up a, uh, like I said earlier, if you set up an Oki situation to get more plus frames by connecting the later frames of 443, You'll be able to actually frame trap into uh, into uh, BOK1. What's up, Milo? Alright. The other option that'll be okay, we got BOK2, which is a launcher. Yeah! I think it's safe on block, right? Yeah. Safe on block, class 3, I think they call that, when they launch that high. So you get a lot of damage out of it. Yeah, if you could if you could connect the delayed hot kick, that's probably you're probably gonna get some of the best damage doubles out of it, right? I don't know what the fucking post bound follow up is for Leo, right? But still, you get the idea. Um, next we got BOK3, which is the high homing plus nine on block juggle starter. Uh, it's obviously really slow, and it's a high. So you're not going to frame trap into it, but when you get people afraid to press buttons, that will keep your pressure going. It's basically a free way to keep up your pressure. 
and then we got BLK4, which is the knee. Fold 4, it's a K and K. So, like, <laughs> a Bula Gas Loop. Yeah, a little bootleg loop here. So BLK4 is just the forward forward knee with the same frames. Now we got BLK1 plus 2. A nice armor move, and that will be how you stop people from mashing, even in the situation where you're only plus 1. Right? It is a high, but I think it's safe on block. Yeah, it's negative 9. Safe on block high. So the thing about BLK is, uh, I said this in part one, it's less like, it's not like a traditional mix-up tool, you're not forcing a low mid mix-up out of it, but you are for you are using the evasiveness of it on top of this, like, similar to like Lee, uh, Lee's Hitman stance, like using an armor move to stop you from attacking. It's just, once you get the opponent to stop them from attacking, then the BLK could run the BLK3 and go back into a neutral stance at plus nine. So it's just another way to get into your opponent's head. You know what I'm saying? And depending on how they react, right? If you work this, you work in that armor, they're gonna start to do lows and shit like that. And if it's a low that doesn't high crush, they're gonna eat that. If it's a low, for example, like this. Like if I show you this sequence, right? Fuckers down, it's down. Right? So someone's gonna be like, oh, let me jab after that, right? Or let me, sorry, while standing four, and then they eat that, right? Like, all right, they did that, now let me go low, right? So the low is gonna be what beats it out. Although in this case, it's a fucking low that, um, that keeps me crouching. So in this case, it's not the best. Um, what's the other way to go into be okay? GG Dooley, that's uh, K and K. B O K is. Fobu, Fobu. So what goes into Fobu? Down back 2 2, right? That's plus 5. That's Fubo, not Fobu. God damn it. <laughs> All right, we want Fobu, right? Fobu. Jesus Christ, okay. All right, let me just scroll up here. I'm gonna try one that keeps me standing. What's up, Seducier? Do I think the Kazumi changes in the arcade are lame? No, I do not. I think uh, I think it might hit her hard because uh, the really good players will be able to punish it. Good players that aren't really good, it won't matter. It's going to be the same situation for them. Reason being, just theoretically, let's uh, let's uh, what you call it, theorycraft for a second here, right? They took away range from jab and down forward one. Those are the big two. The magic forward nerf hurts in different ways too. It makes it easier to whiff punish. The other big two is her one one and her down forward one pressure, right? That, that's her main pressure tools. So, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be situations where you get she's gonna like do some sort of situ uh, set set herself up in a way where before a one one would have been a situation that it would have like connected blocked, right? You would have had to like block or get in hit or maybe backdash. Now it's just gonna be the first one is gonna whiff, then the second one will probably block in a, in a, in, in, a, in a lot of these situations. That gap will be enough for a lot of people to whiff punish it. And there's gonna be, you're going to see that a lot. Assuming it's a significant nerf in range. There's going to be a lot of that going on. Because before, she could be a little bit like, she could be like back here and reliably still do forward 1-1. One, one, and it, it's probably going to have to be blocked or, you know, or sidestepped or whatever. Done. But it's still going to be within range. Now, around here, the first one who might whiff and the second one will be blocked. You're probably going to see a lot of that. And that, those little tiny gaps are enough for the really good players to notice 
It's like, oh, if I back dash here, all of a sudden I could just do wah, bah, bah, an interrupter. Or even worse, a magic four. Geese. Is while uh, is while Stanny Four still going to be able to set up the Magic Four? It's slower on block. No, it's not so. While Stanny Four is still the same speed. What happens is the whiff. It's worse on whiff and on block. As far as while Stanny Four connecting, it's still what it was before. I don't know if it's 11, 12, or 13 for her, but it's the same. What's going to happen is if you get it blocked, you can't sidestep. Well, you technically you could have not before either, but like Leo is negative seven. Leo can't really sidestep at negative seven. And on whiff, there's going to be uh, two more frames for your opponent's a whiff punish. You know, react the whiff punch properly with something big. That's all that really means. That doesn't mean it's like negated the change, but you get the idea. So I'm looking for BOK -okay transitions. Ah, here we go. This is negative eight on block. No, we need something better than that. Down back one plus two down. This is negative twelve on block. No good. Does she have a plus on block transition? Forward three. Here we go. This is the big one. Yes, this is the one I remember from last time, right? It's not big, but this move. So this move when you hold down is plus one on block, right? And it leaves the opponent standing. That's why I was looking for something else. Forward, forward, three, forces crouch. It sets up a different scenario. Forward three, down, bow, right? So I'm not forced crouch. I don't have access to an 11 frame mid. I don't have access to a 12 frame mid as Leo either, I think, right? That's 13 frames. I only have access to 13 frame mid. So, that means it's actually gonna crush. This is not a frame trap, it's crushing. That's why you see on the right hand side it says punish. It doesn't say counter hit. It's crushing. That basically one frame after the active frame is when Leo is not considered crushing, high crushing out of the BOK1. The very first active frame here, it's obvious that Leo is still crushing. That's why I'm getting hit and I'm not hitting Leo. Oops. Or maybe after after it's active, right? Because then it's plus one into 13 frames. This is what? 13 frames. No, it's 12 frames, sorry. Yeah, so sorry. On the same frame that BOK1 is active is when Leo loses the uh, high crush. That's what's happening. So it's a good high crush, right? So that's why a 13 frame mid at plus one is beating out my 10 frame jab. Cross jab, though. No good, right? So then, you set that up. You make that clear to the opponent. They don't know. Then you go, all right. Then when you start doing other shit, like the magic four, that's when you go, and you do that. The armor, what, BOK one plus two. So that way, oh, look at that. It actually is an even more consistent high crush on top of being an armor. Move. Check that out, all right? But it'd be like cross that, right? Well, look at another cross that with. How weird is that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, shit gets weird. If they start swinging at this, you get the arm move seems to cover you for a lot of situations, but it is slow. Very slow. Right? Risky. But still, it's there to get them to do, like, Weird shit on on on, uh, on uh, when you block the forward three. So then they're gonna go, oh, you're doing this fucking armor move. I'm gonna go low, and then I happen to have a low counter hit tool like that. Oops, I didn't need that. <laughs> Is it down two? Yeah, it's two. Or they'll just do. You know, ugh, it's not even coming out because of the blocks. That is so weird. Right? Shit like that. That's when you work in. That. Right? Now, depending on the low that I do, I might get hit, I might not. For example, that makes it whiff because I'm high crushing. But if I go down forward, all of a sudden I eat that. And then you get a juggle. 
Even better if I try to do the Dom for too. It's counter hit instead, so you get even more damage. That's kind of how this works. There is no like traditional mix up here. It's just you have to pick an evasive or arm move depending on how your opponent reacts to be okay. And typically people get afraid of be okay, but this is really for the transitions out of be okay. If you're just running be okay in a neutral situation, you're just kind of trying to make something with, make something with. You know, that's really what you're trying to do. You make something with and then you throw out a move. That's really all that's happening here. You know, and the risk isn't so bad in a lot of these be okay options. Uh, yes, that was G. That song. Uh, the current patch notes flying wonky posts on Aris's website, and he translated them there. He probably had them on his Twitter too. But if you just go to and you scroll down, avoiding the puddle .com, and you scroll down a bit, you'll find it eventually. You'll see Wonky has translated them. Flying Wonky, the, uh... We would be nowhere without him in the, in the second scene, I'll tell you that much. Well, we would be nowhere without him, but he helps tremendously. Every, anytime he sees anything Tekken related in Japanese, he translates it. The good dude. Alright. Yeah, that's pretty much be okay in a nutshell. So another thing about be okay is... You could uh, cancel be okay and some more crouch. By just by holding down, you recover crouching. So an example like I showed before where I was like... Right? Or... Right? You go into full crouch. Just like that. So there's like big windows where Leo can be hit here, but Leo is... It's kind of like a bootleg AOP, right? <laughs> Except uh, Ling Xiaoyi has loads out of AOP. But the whole point of it is, I want to make you whiff. The transitions and shit, the stance shit I'm doing, is actually taking... There's actually big gaps here that you can hit me during, but they're, they are also quite evasive. And I have an armor move, depending on how slow you are to react to this stuff. But the windows are there. So if you fight against Leon, there's a lot of this shit going on. You have to find your right tool for your character to use in those social situations. A low hitting, a low hit bot, a low move in general. Uh, preferably a high crushing low, right? Uh, or a mid that has a really low hitting hitbox. Preferably one that recovers fast so you can duck the armor move. That's kind of what you need to deal with this stuff. And the force Leo to change it up. Next, we got the core circle forward moves. Core circle forward one. The low I went over before is negative two on hit, on counter hit. It's a uh, plus eleven, which means on counter hit you get. This is a proper plus eleven, which means if I don't fuck it up, you get. While standing one, uh, four, one plus two. Oh shit, Kim's team. UNK 600. <laughs> weird. Second boss says weird shit here. Um, so yeah, of course I go on good move. It's only negative 13 on block, but let me not say only because certain characters can launch that. So depending on the matchup, you want to be careful using this move. I didn't know it was negative on hit. I don't know if it always was, but now that I know that, I know that I don't have to worry too much when it hits me regularly. I could probably press buttons still. Uh, like a down forward one will exchange with a while standing four. Uh, so negative 13, like I said, uh, you gotta be careful. You gotta know your matchups. Don't, maybe don't do that too much against Josie. Maybe you don't do that too much against Kazuya. Yes, you can do it against Eddie. He does have a while standing 13 frame launcher, but it is a high. It is that elbow into that kick where he goes on all fours backwards, whatever. It goes just to relax. That's 13 frames, but it's a high mid. So you can totally run this on Eddie. But yeah, everyone else, the uh, severity of the block punish will vary. Of course, everybody can just slow parry and then do whatever, right? I really don't know what to, what to do. 
Next, we got Corsica to Forward 2, which is, uh... Damn, you have to press that shit instantly. This looks like it should have a third hit. But Corsica Forward 2 by itself is 17 frame start on plus 9 on hit. You can hold back to go to be okay. Uh, it's still negative 9 if you do that, but you get be okay with some spacing. And it's still plus 9 if you do that on hit. Counter hit. Nothing special. Natural combo on normal hit. Plus a core 2 1. Second hit has counter hit properties. That's probably guaranteed. That's the kind of knockdown just like this, where it won't floor break, though. Just like that. at all you're gonna get clipped you gotta be careful yeah so while this is negative nine you still have to react pretty fast it's a punish because uh, leo can't block during that stance so you have to be ready and then this move this is a really good move of course we go forward three plus four Oh, by the way, what was it? This was uh, negative 13. What's the pro with 2 1? I could have sworn there was a third hit. Am I crazy? No, that's not punishing. Oh, it's safe? safe? Oh, it's actually safe. I'm sorry. Close to forward one. The low was negative 13. Yeah. It's negative nine, though, so you're not sidestepping after this. I mean, it's not... The spacing is not really in your favor. Damn, that's safe. It's another one of those moves that it's safe, and it looks like it shouldn't be. <laughs> Leo has a few of those. Like this shit. What is it? Uh, that. That into the shoulder, that's safe. Even though it looks like it shouldn't be. I mean, it needs to counter hit, but still, it's safe. Usually, in second, you see a shoulder, you're like unsafe. Not in this case. Alright, this is a really good move because it's, um. Wall splats, homing. Mid mid right yeah mid mid low crushes um and it's yeah homing mid low crush wall splat safe on block good move very good move I think it's new in this game so yeah negative six it's pretty good you can still armor after it probably everything but a jab will lose. to 12 frames will beat our armor in that situation. But 13 frames will lose. Oh, uh, sorry. 13 frames beat it out. What was it? Uh, last 14 frames? I forget what's 14. Eighteen. Well, 15 frame loses. I'm guessing 14 frame will lose too. Alright, so it's not great to use armor in that situation. Uh, but still. Yeah. Negative six. Not bad. Uh, 
down, down forward neutral. I guess pretty much everything. I don't know if I talked about down forward two last time, but just in case you don't know, while Leo has good range on down forward two and it's a good whiff punisher, it is negative uh, 13 to negative 11 depending on the spacing here as you can see. I got it level, negative 11 one time, didn't I? Negative 12. I got it negative level one time. 13. Negative 12. You can tell the axis messes with it too. Point being, if you block this from max range, maybe stick with negative uh, your 12 frame, 10, 11, 12 frame Punisher instead. Assuming you have the range. Just in case you get in one of those weird situations where like that right there, that was negative 12. Funky how that happens, right? Um, either way, it's one of those down four twos that, despite it being unsafe, does not launch crouchers on normal hit. Does not. So when you're thinking uh, uh, as Leo, if you're thinking with punish with the mid, uh, with punish with the mid, right? And so I'm gonna launch. If the opponent is recovering crouching, do not do down forward two. Do hop kick. Either that or wait for the later frames. Hopefully they don't recover like ducking the whole time. Then you'll get a launch, but still. It, it gets a little weird. You might not, you gotta be ready for like that happening and you might not get a launch. But then again, when you have a situation, that might whiff too. You know, so. It gets a little weird. I know Bloodhog is talking about hating this because it's like, why is it unsafe? Not only is it unsafe, it's negative 13 instead of negative 12. Like Dragon Ball's top four is only negative 12, I think. Get fucked, Leo. That's just the reality of the situation. So, yeah. Down four two is still a great whiff punisher. It has because it has a lot of range. Good range. As long as they're standing, it's gonna launch our normal hit. Uh, maybe I overstated the range a bit, but it has solid range. Better range than your than your generic down four two that is safe on block like a Paul or a Law down four two. They have a lot less range than this. So, yeah, keep that in mind. All right, so next we have grabs. Oh, no, actually, next we have a punch parry. RB Norway doesn't show the punch parry. I always hate that shit. Makes you forget that they exist sometimes. All right, uh... So there's some start up here. Okay, this actually has a bigger window than a lot of other ones. So you know it's right. In a situation where I block a jab, or if I try to return with a jab, it's only for punches. If I try to return with a jab, 10 frame jab, parry, right? Down forward one, no good. Down forward two, no good. So there's actually a, a kind of tight window here. Like the active window. We're talking like frame like two to like six or some shit like that, you know? But if I block a negative seven move, all of a sudden, down forward one gets parried. Jab uh, doesn't. Down forward two gets parried. So point being, the thing that you parry, if you're trying to use it off of a block situation, your mods may vary. It's actually like probably better to use it in heavier negative frames than usual. Have I ever gone through um, Lars's move this? No, I have not. Not yet, at least. Down the road. My next character is going to be Paul. Especially since I've been playing Paul lately. Uh, and my boy Beta has been asking for Paul. So I'm going to do Paul next. Lars will probably be soon now I think about it. So anyway. This is like good to use in just a generic neutral situation. Just a regular neutral situation. Because it's active pretty fast. That much we can tell because I'm putting, my, uh, putting her at uh, negative 9. Negative seven, sorry. And then that opens up 13 frame, right? Being parried. Now, what I don't know is if there's a built-in follow-up. 
One plus two, where you at? I don't think it's even here. No, it's back one plus two. Back one plus two. Here it is. No built-in follow-up. So as far as uh, what Leo gets for free, I'm not too sure. Let's see. See, I have to delay it. I think that's the guaranteed follow. One plus two, one plus two. Oh. Well, that's two, two. So two, two is the guaranteed built-in follow, -up, right? You actually get nothing else guaranteed. You have to do the built-in 2-2 two, two after. Uh, no, I'll get to you soon. Don't worry, I wasn't. Most gross, for sure. Lars is like somebody that's historically fucked me up. Even now that he's in his weakest incarnation yet, right? I still have a lot of trouble finding good, really good players that use Lars. I, I don't know, something about him fucks with my brain. So he's definitely going to be soon. I, I can't tell you how soon yet, and now my streaming has been a lot more inconsistent because of school. Like this this past week, I couldn't stream at all. I wanted to do part two for so long, but school just fucking, the projects, right at, right at the beginning of the semester, one after the other, nonstop. Here we got, like, I got like a nice little one week break. <laughs> I still have to do some homework, but I don't have a bunch of projects to do this whole week because of the Jewish holidays, there's no classes. So anyway. So yeah. Your only guaranteed thing out of this is 2-2. Two, two. Just mass 2-2 two, two after it. And I think that wall splats. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've seen that wall splat before. They get a wall combo after it. So that's the punch berry. Now we got a parry parry. An actual, like, I'm gonna parry your shit. Now the windows for these, the actual counters, right? Yeah. This is the one that switch sides and it wall splats. It's probably a bigger window. I had a feeling. Usually this input tells me bigger window to do the counter or the parry. Not that one. I delayed a bit. Just so you guys can see. That's the one you use when your back is to the wall, the other one you use when the opponent's back is to the wall, or something like that. Or just if you want some damage. Is Aris screaming? I'm assuming Aris is on now. I usually lose a lot of tech viewers when Aris is on. Yep, looks like he is. I got a lot of follows. I don't know if any of those people are still around, but I appreciate the follows. I haven't been paying attention to my, uh, <laughs> to my, uh, 
the dashboard, so I don't, I don't notice. I don't have a sound effect for followers, so I don't notice it. Sorry about that. But I always, all the followers and everyone who subbed earlier, I love all you guys. I appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna get to the wall. Switch position. Forward. Then it becomes, what is your combo in that situation? Because there's no bound anymore, right? That would be what you did before, because the bound. Check that out, we switch sides for down two. It might just be one hit, and which means you might want to just do that. If it's just one hit. Might not be bad. If you go to 443, be okay. Because then you can just cancel because it, it knocks down and spikes that way and go to full crouch if you want. Or you could just do. See? And keep pressure. Be okay, three. Now let's see what else we got here. There you go. Nothing guaranteed after that, though. But you could probably get good Oki in that situation, right? It looks like you do. Without rage, excuse me. Let's see if I can set up the scenario here. Nah, this is hard to record. I, I need a second person to record what I'm thinking of recording right now. I want to assess. All right, here's what I'm thinking, so you guys know. I wanted to test just doing this regularly, right? Doing, um, not that. And seeing if there's a gap where they could hit me. Because if there isn't, then you could totally use that to supercharge and force a mix up with their back to the wall. A mix up between, um, Urena. Between this and, of course, this. Which would wall splat. That wall splats. Nope. You could if that were if that were a situation where they couldn't interrupt the low at least, you would get trying to get the the, the low wall hit on the last hit. There it is. 86 total damage off of the mid option. <laughs> You've come to the right place, but I am almost done. It'll be, it'll be all uploaded uh, in the YouTube below. 
So yeah, I don't have a second person to test this with me though, so I don't know if I could do this. Right. Huh. I could try to... No. I mean, it would be the same situation if they were to tech with their face to the wall, right? I think so. Let's see. But if I turn on tech... Standing, right? Alright, we got tech on, right? Side roll. It doesn't matter which direction. Either way, they're gonna recover the same amount. Alright, and then we lost that. Oops. It looks like they could interrupt me. That's what worries me. So, let's record. This I can record on myself, and then we could just kind of assume that if we were to connect to that situation where your opponent's back is facing you after the wall splat, after the parry, it would probably be the same scenario. It would turn out the same way, I think. I'm not sure. It'd be hard to, like, you know, really know unless you were to actually, um, yeah, switch sides. Test it on another player. That's all I really need to see. If the mid connects, we know we're good. Oh, it beat out 11 frames. It beat out 11 frames. That's a 14 frame mid. 16 frame low. Now let's test it out. Let's test it out with the low. You're not wrong, Wilhelm. Wilhelm? Oh, hold on, hold on. You're not wrong, but we know that the mid is not talked about, but the mid is 14 frames. The low is 16 frames. And we know that the low could reset the, uh, well, I mean, not, I mean, I say that much because it's a different kind of knockdown. It's not a wall splat. I don't think that wall splat's that low into the mid. I feel a sneeze coming, but it's not coming out. Damn it. <laughs> Ah, all right. Yeah, uh, maybe I didn't record it right. Let me try it again. I mean, even if the, even if the mid is the only one that's interruptible, that might be good enough to stop them from mashing. Might, yeah, but it's less good. And the thing is, if they stay down and get hit by the low, you'll still lose the supercharge, so you'll be able to block. Right. Yeah, how about uh, 13? You shouldn't. Yeah, see? So the window is there. I don't have 12 frame right loss on here. Uh, have I ever? Oh, no. I'm not working in real combos, so this is probably over my head for the present. My full punish is launched, 1-4-1-2. One, one, I mean, that's better than nothing. You talking about launch juggles? At least you're getting something. I mean, you could do better, but better than nothing. I mean, what you want to do, if you want an easy mode launch combo... Let me turn on switch sides. I don't know what to do a will post tilt. Let's see what the movement says. might be too complicated. What does it say for post uh, tailspin here? Sample combo number three. Uh, back one, four. Up forward, one, four. Forward, four. While rising, one plus two.
I'm trying to think of an easy mode of thing, so it's not too. Makes that hard to do, so I can't recommend that. Which back one floor work? Let's go right. Maybe that. Ah, you're a smart person for doing that. Trying to get you uh, comfortable with neutral and bases before you go learning combos. I think you should, at the very least, though, learn one just easy combo, right? Instead of like, you said you're doing, let me just turn off the walls for a second. Most of these moveless runs I do, I don't really get into combos unless I already know some combos with the character. So, but if, there are several that I've done where I haven't really gone beyond, oh, how do I convert this move into a juggle? Then I stop there. Once I see, oh, you get the tailspin here, that's all we gotta see, then we know we get a full combo. So, like, Leo's an example of a character I've never really used, so I don't know the, the juggles, but. Like, just an easy mode combo. Back about uh, 1 4, delay the 2, back 1 4, down forward 1 plus 2. Cause you said you're doing. Uh, what? That's oh, 1 1, right? No, oh, you're probably doing 1 2. Right? right? You're getting 38 damage. You could get at least more than that. So, back 1 4, that goes into the stance, and then pause for a moment and then hit 2. Because if you do it too fast, oh no, in this case you don't have to worry about doing it too fast. Back one, four, two, and you could dash up, back one, four, and something else. Right, back one, four, you can do it again. You can just do it again, 53 damage. You get like 20 more damage than what you were doing before, right? And that, that you don't even need to like time that. Like back one, four, two, you even need to dash? No, you don't need to dash after the two. <laughs> Back one, four, two. Four, four, back one, four, two. You're canceling out of the dash with another back one. Right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Easy. And then you can start getting into the more complicated stuff later. Stuff like while standing three. You know, was it while standing three down forward? Is, it, is that how you do it? Doesn't while standing three cancel into. Or is it, no. Oh, no, no. You don't, you don't <laughs> That'd be funny that work. Way to dash up into that. But apparently you can get a full combo off of counter hit forward three. If I were to guess. Yep, there it is. Right? I don't know what would be after that, but I'm pretty sure it's that low into something. Float with while standing three. Oh, not that bad. Yeah, 
I gotta get a deeper dash. I got it. I said it's not that bad because I got it the first time, and now I'm like, oh boy, it's not working. What do you do after the boss 93? good damage too if you're able to get it and 4-3 is a good move okay so uh, UG vibes uh, when would you hit with forward 3 I haven't used it intentionally myself but forward 3 has a few purposes right so I talked earlier about BOK BOK is this dance the one that in the neutral you press down plus 1 plus 2 to go into <clears throat> forward 3 is just a good tool in general because when you hold down after you use it, you're going to be okay. And if they block it, you're at plus one. And when you're at plus one and be okay, you can kind of force a pseudo mix up of sorts. Even though there's no low built into be okay. Because the thing about be okay is if you go to be okay and then you hold down, you go into full crouch. And when you're in full crouch, you have full crouch down forwards plus three. Which means you have a dangerous low when you're in full crouch. When you have a dangerous low in full crouch, you could use mids to mix up with it. So if you do this, sorry, do this and you hold down, you go into that, or you go into a mid launcher. Which also opens up other stuff like this and so this. Basically, if you use the uh, forward three to be okay one, that stops people from jabbing. And when you stop people from jabbing, you could uh, you force them to kind of stand still and block, or maybe try to sidestep. The OK3 is a homing move. It cannot be sidestep. It is a high, so they can duck it, but if they block it, it is plus nine. Plus nine. The thing about second, sidestepping requires frames, right? So when an opponent is at plus nine, they ain't gonna sidestep too much. Should show you what that means here, right? I'll put sidestep left. Jab, can't sidestep. Down forward one, can't sidestep. Standing forward, can't sidestep. Hop kick, can't sidestep. Down forward two, can't sidestep. Back one, can't really sidestep, no. And as you might know, back one four forces mix up. Because of K and K stance. K and K stance forces a mix up. Also, back one by itself is a counter hit. Be okay. You can do it. You can do it again, back to back, if you want. <laughs> this low can't sidestep. The sweet can't sidestep. I try to make it go the other direction. Same thing. Jab. Nope. Four. Nope. Down four one. Nope. Down four two. Nope. Down four. Nope. The sweet. Nope. Here's the idea. Uh, I assume that 4 3 itself is 0, but plus 1 in the second active frame, and plus 1 when 4 3 down? 4 3 down is plus 1, yes. Uh, second bot doesn't show it, but or I guess it does. Yeah, it's 0, but when you hold down, it's plus 1. Same thing with 4 4 3. 
Four four three when you hold down is plus one, but in the case of four four three, it forces your opponent into a crouching state. So that actually changes what you could do and be okay because eleven frame while standing moves will beat out your two. Because uh, BOK2 is a uh, 13 frame move. And it high crushes. So, in the case of while standing forward, that's not a high. It's a uh, 11 frame mid. So you'll be interrupted. You'll have to basically, in that situation, you'll have to rely a lot more on the armor. To stop them from doing shit. By the way, plus one, you, you see the opponent opposing Leo. Even though I'm at plus one, no problem sidestepping that. No problem sidestepping that. No problem sidestepping that. That's the homie move. Nope. Also, that homie move that's plus nine on block, that's high. That's a jungle starter on normal hit. But it causes instant corkscrew, which means you cannot get another corkscrew out of it. Right, you can't do... See? I see another jungle. You gotta do, a, like, another weird jungle. I don't know what it would be, but... Bootleg ass makes it juggle. I just did. Get that forward four to connect. Basically, I need to do a deeper cross dash. It looks like. Yep, you gotta get a deeper cross dash. Four one. Oh, why am I doing a four three? Okay. I'd really delay that shit. That's a tough one. I'll add it once. Now that's the body fall a little closer to the ground. That's how I think I'm gonna get in the ground. That last hit is tough.
Damn it. How much damage is that? Is this even worth the damage? Seems shitty. Eighty damage? That's not worth that damage. That shit is trash. Oh, I can't do that. I'm already at 70 damage, but that it's way easier. that work. I guess I got 75, so five more damage to burn your rage. You're gonna burn your rage. 70 times damage. How much easier? One less damage than all this bullshit that they're telling you to do. One less damage just to go down back three, forward three, back one, four, two, dash up, super. Oh, what up, Windex? Uh, practicing double back one. Scrubs, because this task here I come. So yeah, you know about back one, right? Back one is definitely the ultimate scrub killer. Like, one of the best scrub killers in the game, in my opinion. Or just like, oh, you don't know the legal matchup? What a shame. It's one of those. That's a big one. I guess you don't know how to beat it, though. First of all, that beats it, right? Oh, wait, not in case I'm too slow, in case I'm Leo, right? So that's okay. Still, that beats it. As long as you're not too slow. Uh, uh, you may as well end with forward four while standing three, one, two. Oh, so you get the full wall combo. Got it. Alright, well anyway. Now that we got, like, a little sidetrack with some juggle theory there. My recommendation, if you're just new to Tekken or Leo, just back one, four, two, dash, back one, four, two. And then learn the harder shit later. Sabaki. 
<laughs> Does it just look cool or do you get something for it? I think she's gonna screw you. Smell her armpit. Question is, do you actually get anything guaranteed? Nope. I don't know what this situation gives you, but it's there. Ah, built in standing four and leaves you back there. I knew that had to be something. Match four, you get that, and then you're back there. You got 12 frame mid for back turn, that's negative 20 on lock. Beta! What's up? <laughs> Captain America move this run through? Oh, you on that Marvel now? By the way, Beta, new emo. Smiling Akuma. I kinda have to do it again, because it's too small. But, you got Smiling Akuma from Tekken Bowling there. Well, um, I wish they'd given the rest of the characters they're missing one or two throws. Yeah, I agree. I wish Gigas had some more command grabs, honestly. That's not one plus two break. Uh, speaking of back one and his stance, I can cancel it with Don Ford, but I can only follow up with quarter circle forward. That is correct, the UG Vines. 100% correct. 100. So that's supposed to be smiling at Kuhn, but he's too small. So I have to do like a more zoomed in so you can see the stupid smirk on his face. That's when in Tekken Bowling, when he does like a spare or a strike, he's like... <laughs> and it looks really fucking weird. Um, you cannot... Not, not with Leo. Leo does not have any built-in throws. If you get your opponent really afraid, you could totally do something like... Uh, into a throw. That's totally viable. You can just complete the motion and then grab him in the end. Because the cool thing about Tekken, when uh, you see, this is basically a roll dash, but it counts as a cross dash, technically, right? So when you see this, treat it like a stance, right? Cross dash moves, you could totally delay your input. This is, of course, like a forward two, cross dash, right? If I did it instantly, I could totally do it instantly, right? But if I do a cross and forward and do it at the end, it still counts as cross dash two. So the whole thing is when people see this, they always have to worry about your options out of it throughout the whole duration of the animation. The cool thing is, course for 1 plus 2 is the same as while standing 1 plus 2. You can totally go, uh, bah, in the end. Or, uh, oh, sorry, uh, throw. You can totally do that shit. And then when they start mashing, that's when you do it instantly. That's when you do it instantly. Just know that on block, the, the K and K knee stance into the cross dash is not a frame trap. It's only a frame trap if that knee connects. And the only thing you get is while standing four, which will exchange with uh, jabs. I just tested this earlier. That's how I know. The ball physics. Be able to use them as weapons. Just choke your opponent out with them and toss them around like fucking Spider-Man and shit, right? Speaking of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Alright, so all I have left really is to look at the throws. So Leo's throw game, uh, you only have one command grab, unfortunately, so there's no command grab with one or two. Let's see what we got here. Palm thrust, that's good positioning. Depending on how fast it recovers, you might have good Oki there. Positioning not so great on this one. Side throw, you're not really gonna see him, but. Oh shit, Robert Miles, rest in peace. No Oki on this one. This is Rockstein from Garu. Good positioning, you might have okay Oki, I don't know. But it's a side throw, so you're not really gonna see it. Back throw. Kidney, knee to the kidney. Good positioning, but far away. And then this throw right here. There's only one place that you, well, you, you know, in general, you can use this throw in the mid stage. But when your back is to the wall, that is the fucking juice. Because if I'm not mistaken, even when this throw is broken, you switch sides, don't you? Oh, that's not the throw. 
Yes, when your back is to the wall. This is something you want to think about. I don't think you completely switch sides. You might end up with the wall to your side. I should have switched to the wall to your side. Yeah, like uh, Yuji Vines, then you gotta understand about that knee that goes into K and K, which is the knee stance. Uh, it only retains those plus frames if you use the built-in options out of the stance. A lot of stances in Tekken work that way, where the transitions into them will give you a different frame data than moves that have the option to be like, oh, I'll have, like for example, this, that, 443. I don't have to go into the stance. If I don't go into the stance, stand block. It's negative four forces cross. If I go into the stance, it's plus one. The bot doesn't always show it properly. The bot, if you see it on the top middle. If I hold down, that's plus one. But it's plus one in the sense that only my options out of that stance retain that frame advantage. Because if I don't go into, you know, if I go into the stance and I'm at plus one, and then I let go and don't do anything, I'm delaying my follow. That plus one doesn't matter anymore. Same thing here. That you're automatically going into a stance. So you're like at plus nine. The bot doesn't show that. The second bot frame there. But that's a frame trap. That's a frame trap. The highs, right? That uh, that is interruptible by jabs. As is this. But not anything slower it will not be interrupted. So the idea is you use this to stop them from pressing buttons, because on counter hit, it gives you a draw, right? Wham! Wham! You got a counter hit, and it's safe on block. That's the idea. For that particular stance. No problem. Monster Hunter World got a release date. I will see you there. I'll see anybody playing that there. I'm all in for Monster Hunter World for sure. I'm still up in the air about Dissidia, which also comes out in January. The only thing I dislike is it comes out right as my last semester. I'm, I'm in four-year college right now. My last semester is next semester, which is going to start at the end of July. So it's like, fuck. <laughs> you could have come out in the beginning of July. It comes out the end of July. I could have had a good full month of Monster Hunter goodness. You know what else is coming out around uh, a fucking... What well, is coming out at the end of uh, December or early December? Xenoblade 2. I want to try to. I, I'm playing near right now on the side. I want to try to finish near Autom Autom Automata Automata, and I really want to play fucking uh, Xenoblade One before Xenoblade Two comes out, and then Xenoblade Two will be out, and that will be between semesters, and I could go through all of that. I wish the character designs weren't so ugly though. All right, we saw what the throws looked like. Now we want to go to. I want to see what the positioning is like when you break it. Okay, it is not a full side switch. We're at an angle here. But it is basically a side switch, right? That what ends up happening is if you don't break it, that is a wall splat. Even when uh, Leo's back is not pressed up against the wall, that's a wall combo if you don't break that. It's like one of the only throws in the game that does that. So that makes this a very good throw, even if they're good at throw breaking, you switch sides. Those of you that missed it earlier, I tested in that situation. If you use forward forward two into that key charge as a wall combo, the back forward one will interrupt wake up kicks. And you can mix that up with a key charge down four two. If they stay down, the down four will hit them and you'll lose the key charge and they'll just whiff that over their body that high. If they get up, they have to guess between the low, which is a counter hit combo starter, and you can still key charge again after that. All day long, right? 
as in the back one full uh back through back three one two. Which is a special string only in key charge. And it's all combos on counter hit, which key charge gives you. Gimmicky shit, but there's something to it. For sure. Oh, you got to the DBZ beta? Let's see. I'm actually really excited for that game. It looks really cool. I'm like awful at anime games though, so I don't think I'm gonna get any good at it, but I really wanna play it. Okay. So now to go through a uh, throw key, we're gonna set wake up kicks. Out. Start with low. the mid that you really want to work. Ooh. Good shit. On counter hit, you get a juggle, right? If they stay down, it hits them grounded. Here's what happens if they stay down. If they stay down, Oh, that's not guaranteed in that situation, because uh, face down. Still, if they stay down, they're going to get hit for 16 damage. Right? Gonna, this is up for people for 20 damage, if they stay down. I'm going to guess they can side roll it. That's fine if they can side roll it. Oh, only in one direction. Towards, uh, what was it, left? Towards left. You got that. Of course, if you do the follow-up, you're gonna get punished probably, right? Because then it's gonna whip. Well, maybe not. And if you want less risk, you can just throw in a down four in there. Down four will keep you coming for the same damage. Just do down four. Just do down four. Don't do down back four. Down four, they stay down. Uh, and side roll, you could maybe stomp, right? No, how about a uh, down four? Yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea anymore anyway because it's launch punishable. So just stick with down four, the safer, the less risky option. Better way to word it. Right? Beat staying down side row, it'll beat wake up kicks, right? Yep. And on counter hit. I don't know if you can counter hit confirm that follow up though. That is a counter hit string. I don't know if you can confirm that though. What is this music? Uh, this music, the current song is from King of Fighters 13. This is Terry's theme, team, uh, Fatal Fury team thing. It's called Wild Street, I think. Uh, have it just good to give us good enough for Skullgirls. I think mean, Skullgirls is kind of an anime game, right? It has uh, similar ideas and mechanics. I don't really know so much. I'm talking out of my ass. That's ignorance on my part. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, one plus three or one throw. Good OP. Throws are weaker in this game, but you have it. There. And there's definitely no confirming that counter here. So just stick with down four by itself just to be safe. I mean, you could just throw it out. And uh, if they do wake up kick, you'll get both hits. But... You know, if you want to play it safe, just hit with, with the down four. And then mix that with up forward three plus four. As you made a choice. Now, if they do stand up and block, I want to see what happens. Does it whip? Yes, it does. This might be the thing you have to worry about. Yep, okay. This is when this is what makes it a three-way guess instead of a 50-50. Might make it a bit more than a three-way guess, actually. Damn it! The timing, the recovery is so weird. There it is. I don't know if that's guaranteed. Let's see. Looks like it does. It's in the back. 
Yep, that's guaranteed if you hold back. So you got a three-way guess after that throw. You can go down four. If you, if you think you're going to weak a key, you, think you could commit to the down four, too, for counter hit. Up forward three plus four if they stay down, right? And then forward forward two, the moment you recover. If they hold back, it will smoke them. As a matter of fact, that might be the more preferred mid option. Um, what kind of, if they stand straight up, what kind of frame data do you get out of this frame advantage? It's still negative one. So it's not fast enough to give you the uh, later frames, the meaty frames, if you will. Still gonna be negative one. My music ran out. Let me look for music. Let me just look back into the beginning. Let's go out to Disgaea. <sighs> yeah, fuck back row. I'm glad it's gone, personally. Back row was like one of the biggest mistakes uh, a lot of noobs in Tekken would make. And it would make it seem like every juggle is, is fucking uh, infinite because they keep holding back and getting floated and shit. <laughs> I'm glad that it's gone. Personally. Alright. Next we got... Alright, this... This is weird. I don't think you're really gonna get much here. Because the back wake up is gonna get away from most shit. That's a cool looking throw, though. <laughs> Recovery so slow. Oh my god. Yeah. And, uh, you're not gonna get anything out of that. At best, you could chase them down and uh, and uh, use this as a deterrent for wake up kicks if I were to guess. Timing where you can do it. Nope. How about forward forward two? Yeah, forward forward two will be your wake up turn. Unfortunately, it will whiff if they stay down. Also, if you fuck it up and you get counter hit by that low, that's gonna be a juggle for your opponent. So if you're gonna use 442, you better be careful. Jeez, that timing. There it is. Yeah, so 442, and then when it stayed down, that's when you can run up and force whatever mix up you want. Back row catching out of depth. <laughs> you know what it really added. It added your ability to beat up noobs. That's, what it, <laughs> that's all it added. Let's be real. Let's be real. The good players didn't fall. Unless it was a situation where they were forced to back row, they didn't fall for back row catches. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? There's no, like, you know, there's no Oki off of this throw. It's designed strictly for wall being to your back. That's pretty much it for Leo's Oki. Which means that's pretty much it for Leo. Yeah. Oh! Oh shit! Good shit. Leo has generic down four from standing. You have to press it as down plus three plus four. Now this is anytime you have a character that's able to do this, this is good. Because if you notice the Tekken bot, it's oh hers is only negative two. It's usually negative three on it. It's a 12 frame low. This is when I say generic down four, I mean when you um pretty much the whole cast. If you go into full cross like this and press down four, unless they have a unique move out of it, this is what you're gonna see. And this is always a 12 frame low. So some characters are able to do this from standing, which means you have a 12 frame low that crushes highs. Down plus three plus four. Other characters, do, let's say Dragon Off, he could do it with down back four. Other characters is just down four. I think Law is just down four. Leo has down from three plus four. 
And you'll see this in a lot of like Korean players when they're playing each other out. There's a lot of this. Because negative two is you can still move around. It's just a way to get some like chip damage in there, basically. Consider this like like 2D fighting game chip damage, <laughs> you know? Let's right, back up. It's only seven damage. No special counter properties on this. Basically, yeah. One more damage. The Panic Round Close, another. Panic Round Closer is Cross Jab. It's a full Cross Down <laughs> That's the Panic Round Closer. Even if the Cross Jab is blocked, you'll see it coming always. Uh, it is negative 15, though. So maybe that's why uh, Leos is better on block than other times. I, see, I feel like other times it's negative 13. But Leos is negative 15. Maybe that's the trade off for it being. Um... Oh no, sorry. The full Cross version is negative 15. How weird is that? But the instant from standing is negative 13. And in general, I think they track okay-ish, don't they? Yeah. Leo does have the generic down three. See, full cost down three. If you press down three, you get the generic. This is uh, this has like more range and a little more damage, but they're shittier on hit and on block usually. See? Negative 17 on block. And no counter hit properties on that one either. It's just a more damaging option with a little more range. Also, they're slower. They're down three. 16. 16 is still your standard, like, low poke speed. And the range is nice. And it is kind of hard to, um, sidestep. Surprisingly few uh, situations beyond negative one, between negative one and seven. Very surprisingly few situations here. Negative three, there we go. How about that? Song from this game. I forget what it's called actually. Uh, so yeah, I think I covered Leon. That's pretty much Leon in a nutshell, right? Recap. Down forward one. Your main mid poke. 13 frames. Always good, always nice. Negative one on block. You can totally move around after this is blocked. Um, tracks to so one side, is it? Maybe not. Uh, tracks okay to the, your right side. Your. your um, your right side as Leo. So you can totally do a whole lot of like this into this. So if people sidestep to the weak side, they'll get caught, right? Okay. So jab into down forward one. Uh, it's alright. Down four will be one of your primary just like quick little low pokes, right? If you don't want to take too big a risk. For like the big, bigger damage, like this or this, huge risk, right? You just want to chip away some damage. Down four. Also, down plus three plus four. Generic look. You got two nice little go-to low pokes with Leo. In the case of down four, a counter hit. You could throw that in there, even if it's not counter hit, and then they just block the down four. The two will keep you covered, right? Oh, I blocked down four, I got fucking nailed in the face, right? Uh, as far as block punish, 1-4 is your 10 frame. Um, 13 frame is up forward 1-2. 
anymore. It's just, uh... Sorry. Let me check something. Okay. Up forward one, two. Or up forward one, one, depending on what you want to do. That's going to be your 13 frame block punish. It is a high, though. Oh, by the way, down forward one also has a counter hit follow-up. So there's two deterrents attached to down forward one for attacking. One is to sidestep because you're negative one on block. And the other one is if they block and they mash, that one is going to hit them. And on counter hit, combo. And you get a free down four. That's free. Maybe even better. That's not free. That's free too. That's not. Okay, so just down four is free. Uh, you got a magic four. I forget how to juggle out off of it. I think I saw it last time. But Leo does have a magic four. Uh, and then, yeah, you got a full cost mix of things. So down, full cost down four three. You mix it with full cost while standing two. I said this is 10 frame, right? This is 13 frame. Well, this is rather. They both lost flat. Yeah, so they both lost flat. In the mid range, forward 4 2. Good with Punisher. Only negative 10 on block. Uh, forward 4 4 3 is pretty fucking cheap, right? Because you get the low. Sorry. Forward 4 4 3 4. You have the low, which is not lost punish bonus game on block. Uh, it does need a counter hit to uh, juggle, but, but then, you know, when you get people trying to punish this, 4443, which is a juggle starter, the low will counter hit them, and then you'll be able to juggle off of the low, right? The only thing is, if you commit to the low, you lose the ability to juggle. You could do back one for a reset, but resets can be teched. Resets can be teched. Resets can be teched. Resets can be teched. That only happens if they don't press anything. Back flip down, it used to be matching four down back two two. Now it's the same as Brian's if you want a full combo. Oh yeah, dash jab. Yeah. What was the there was like a bootleg ass combo I did last time, wasn't there? It was like two hits. Ah, you you could do okay. If you want some sort of damage, forward uh forward plus two two. Or if you want Oki, four plus two down one. Which floor breaks. If you're in the floor break stage, you will be able to continue to juggle with like forward four two for tailspin. And then go into whatever for the juggle. So yeah. Also, I think it's the same thing. Right? 39 damage. 38 damage. So just do forward to down one for the Oki every time. That's pretty much it. Uh, up forward three plus four and forward forward three are both good Oki twos. Forward forward three goes to the stance. Forward four, back one four are the two ways uh, to go into the, that stance, which I already told you, you get the mix up, right? This is the mid, and then that on block will still stop them from mashing, right? Because on block, it's like plus nine. And then the BOK okay stuff, forward three, hold down, BOK. Okay. Down one plus two, BOK, okay. BOK okay three being your pressure tool. Plus nine on block, while running three, slash kick, plus nine on block. And then if you just want high risks, you know, the only thing you need to add to your lows to go high risk, high reward is uh, down back 4-1. If you happen to have supercharged, down back 4-1-2. Down back 4-1 and the balcony break becomes a juggle starter. My nose is freaking itchy as hell. I always forget where the balcony break is. It's this way, right? So, now, in this situation, I have a low juggle start. Not that. <laughs> uh, right? So, whatever. So, yeah. I could do a better job than that. 